This lecture contains minor inaccuracies, and some story elements have been exaggerated for effect. This lecture is meant to be a jumping off point for you to study Russell's antics yourself. Any clips used are done so in accordance to fair use, and any invitation for Russell Greer to sue me is satire. That all being said, please enjoy Russell Greer 101. All right. Um, Russell Greer, actually, no, no, no. Before I, okay. Before I, like, jump into things like Philip DeFranco style, there's a couple things that I want to get out of the way. Just groundwork, basic shit. First of all, hello, welcome. I'm your guy, I'm your legal professor, I'm your legal mind through all of this. I'm your, I'm the guy that you should come to if you have any questions, any problems, if you think I skipped something, if you need clarification, or if you just need to take a pee pee. What should um, we call you if we have a question, guy? David. All right. Guy or Cranberry. Can I call you David? Call me, I'm cutting this out. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> no. Um, women don't need to speak, did you know? I am currently the most knowledgeable person on the planet about Russell Greer. Guinness, call me. <laughs> I've read every document, I've read every book that he's put out. Two, two and a half. Uh, I've stared into the void. I've played patty cake with the fucking void, guys. This is real. This is real shit. So, Russell Greer. Who is Russell Greer? That's kind of his thesis for his book. That's my thesis for this lecture. In short, he's a sex pest who is most infamous for suing. He sues a, a lot of people. Most notable be Taylor Swift, like, three times. But he's also sued people like Ariana Grande, Farrah Abraham, and currently he's suing Null of the Kiwi Farms, which kind of deserves it, but we'll get into that later. Uh, he's a real creep, and I don't like him. But something you need to know, he has a condition known as... Russell Greer or Null? <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, Sorry, my... So Russell Greer, he has a condition called Mobius syndrome. And what that is, it's a paralysis, I believe, of the seventh facial nerve, like the seventh cranial nerve in his face. It means he can't close his mouth. His like mouth is shaped like a parabola, like his lips are too short, I guess. And then he can't, he has no lateral movement of his eyes, which means it's hard for him to eat, hard for him to eat unlimited breadsticks. I just imagine it like... A fucking like a, like a like a log cutter. That's gonna be relevant later. Hold on to that. Uh, and it's hard for him to like drive. I think he can't drive. He like lies and says that he drives sometimes. But he mostly takes public transportation. Walks. He walks real slow, like a thirty minute mile. Uh, shit like that. Which that's like me in elementary school. Seriously? Yeah. It's like me now. But yeah, he uh this this d disability. It is purely physical. It's like a nervous system thing so it doesn't it like mobius syndrome people are more i guess attuned to autism like they're more likely to be on the spectrum but it's not a one-to-one -one thing he knows what he's doing he's he like he constantly uses his disability as like a thing a crutch i guess don't feel bad for him you're gonna you're gonna be tempted sometimes to feel bad for him but don't because like for many reasons first of all he he posts on facebook all the time that's like his that's how he was originally found out by the farms and by like Taylor Swift's subreddit, and he put and he posted this one thing where he's like, "I think it should be illegal for women to not have sex with a disabled person." Mm. Like, someone replied with like, "But isn't that rape?" And he's like, "It's not illegal if it's legalized, right?" So this is the kind of guy we're dealing with. Uh, it's not rape if it's not a crime. It's not it's rape if rape. it's not a crime. It's that that like brain it's, meme, big brain. Uh, just don't. He's bad. So, Russell Greer. We're going to start from the very beginning. March 7th, 1991. Russell Greer... Or not, he has, like, another name. He was born to a family who did not want him uh, <laughs> for his thing. Uh, and luckily, he found a home with a lovely, very rich luckily. Mormon family. Are you sure this was luckily for us, because this is very funny. Okay. Uh, he, was, he got... Adopted by a rich Mormon family, the Greers, and thus he got his name, Russell Godfrey Greer, and thus our hero is born. Now, we don't know a lot about this family, but we do know two things. They're very Mormon, and they're very fucking rich. Like, when he's a kid, he almost got plastic surgery, but it failed to, like, fix his face. Uh, and the Mormons have this doctrine where it's like... When you say it failed, do you mean they tried? They tried, and it failed. Like... Okay. He was under the knife for like eight hours and it just 
no go. But one thing you gotta know about Mormonism, they have a doctrine where if you are disabled, they, like, love you. Because, def- like, disabled and, I guess, deformed people were, like, angels who fought Satan in, like, the, the first, like, world war in heaven, like, in prehistory. They fought, and so God sent them, sent them to Earth as humans, like, in disguise. So, like, Satan wouldn't kill him. And so as a result, they have a hard life, but they will be rewarded in the afterlife with 72 chicks, I guess. Uh, that's not real, but... So, one of the bishops of his church approached him when he was, like, young and said, Hey, look, Russell, I know you have thoughts about women and girls, but you're probably never going to get a girlfriend, so don't even, like, try. <laughs> Dude, just focus yourself on, like, the church and be good at life. And this made, this made Russell very upset. Uh, he wants a girlfriend, and he wants it now. It. Now. Women are not people. It's me. That's me. I said that. <laughs> and that, that, that's what Russell thinks in regards to women. I don't think that. Not too much, anyway. Uh, so he becomes, as a result, he hates, like, Mormonism. Becomes, like, varying degrees of, like, a late epic Reddit atheist. Like, he's on the rocks with God. So... <laughs> they're not they're not rocks with God. they're not on the best terms let's just say so he's like 18 now and when every like 18 year old mormon boy is expected to go on a mission where like you're a missionary you serve somewhere in the world his parents want him to do this because they're mormon they want him to be a mormon he does not want this at all and because he's behaving badly and because he recently found out i guess that his mr cool image is not real and that everyone despises him specifically for his disability. Bullshit, by the way. He's, like, a creep and gross. <laughs> like, 5'3". Like, short people aren't humans, but... <laughs> so he, he believes that everyone hates him for his disability, he, but everyone... He claims else? that someone came up to him and said, like, like, no cap, people despise you for your disability. Stop living. Oh. What actually happened is he asked, like, 50 girls to prom, and they all said no because he's, like, a creep. And, like, stares at women and, like, is a creep. <laughs> we'll get to that later because this entire lecture is just him creeping on women. Uh, except for this part. This part, um, his parents, like, he's not behaving well. His parents threaten to get his tonsils taken out. They set an appointment because they read it in, like, some Mormon <laughs> uh, medical journal that if you get your tonsils taken out as, like, a kid, you have better behavior. Which is, like, not a thing. It's not substantiated anywhere from what I could tell. Uh, so he's freaking out, and he has anxiety about this, which, I mean, literally, yes, he has anxiety, but I put anxiety in quotes because it's important to know that with Russell, every time he says that he has anxiety, like a, like a little bell should ring off in your head, that he's full of shit. Because it's like, do you know Kurt Eichenwald? He's a journalist who, like, does, he's like a log cow on Twitter, where he'll, like, do crazy shit, and then the next day, like, he... He posted some, th- like, screenshot of, like, Donald Trump lying. And then in his favorite section, his bookmark on the front, it's, like, some fucking hentai. And he's like, oh, I was having a seizure. <laughs> like, that... <laughs> and, like, he... Like, every time he makes a mistake, he's like, oh, I was having a seizure. Uh, this is his wife. He's having a seizure right now. Someone sent him uh, an assault gif on Twitter. Like, a f- flashing image on Twitter. And he apparently went into a seizure. Stuff like that. That's what Russell Greer's anxiety is. So this anxiety causes him to go to the bathroom for an extended period of time to, you know, relieve his anxiety. But also to... Okay. <laughs> I want to I tell the, the two stories of this tale. Because one is from Russell's book, and one is from the police report, if that's any indication. So, let's see. Good combination. He went... His brain went to stupid mode, he says... And he, class clown that he is, decided to write on the wall of the bathroom, uh, like, to, something to the extent, like, of this ephemeral disaster is going to happen. Like, don't come to school on December 19th. <laughs> Some of you guys are cool. And he said, like, oh, it's a joke, because I'm not even going to be in school. That's when I'm getting my tonsils taken out. Whoa, I'm such a funny guy. That's him. And <laughs> How did they know it was him? He well, he has serial killer handwriting. Uh, but that's not even the big thing. Uh, like, his handwriting is very distinct and, like, (laughs) just disgusting to look at, and it makes me vomit every time I watch it. But 
No. So he thinks that every every single person in school needs to do a class clown, like a senior prank. And that was his senior prank. And it was just... Hey, guys. Wacky prank here. Don't and then, the so... Uh, the, the, the police report says that there's a kill list also involved. Russell claims that this was written by a different person, but wouldn't the, like, wouldn't the handwriting be different if it was two different people who wrote the list? And also the list was composed of like women who had said no to him. So, you know, I'm just theorizing here, not slandering, defaming, saying naughty things on the internet. Can't do that. Uh, so he gets fucking arrested. Uh, they, like... Once he goes back to class, after, like, literally just saying, don't come to school, like, this is his day of retribution. Uh, a cop comes up to him, puts his hand on his shoulder, is like, hey, uh, come with us to this main office. And this guy's name is Chet. And something I want you to realize about Chet is that he's either not real or, like, this interaction is completely made up. Because what Chet does is he sits him down in the main office, he's a cop, and he's, like, ornately sucking Russell's cock over, like... Oh, you're, these are complete strangers, uh, by the way. He's like, oh, you're such a good boy. You know, you're in the debate club. <laughs> you're in the speech club. You're, he, he can't talk, by the way, so this is also fake. You have straight A's. You're in National Honor Society. And you play the piano so well. And, <laughs> like, this is just this guy, apropos of nothing. Like, we're going to get you off with as little charges as possible here. And now, notable little tick. Chet, in the book, Chet calls Russell Russ, which is a name, like a nickname that he tries to force all the time. Nobody actually calls him Russ. And anytime anyone in this book or any in this lecture calls him Russ, I want you to think, is he, is this person real or is this interaction reasonable? Because it's not <laughs> at all. Uh, we'll get into that later. But th this book, like Russell Greer's account of his own life is kind of like the Fred movie. If you've ever seen, like, if you're familiar with the guy from like 2009, the YouTuber Fred, he got a movie with Nickelodeon. It's kind of like that, where it's like, interspersed with these weird fantasies of things things that don't happen ever. Like your dad being John Cena. Right, exactly. Shit like that. Where it's like, oh, we'll get to that later, because that's like plot specific. But it's fucking okay. Th there is a celebrity cameo, and it's not Taylor Swift, shockingly. Um, so yeah, he also had a gun, so that's fun. Uh, what do you do with what the gun? What did he mean he had a gun? He yeah. brought a gun to school. Uh, oh, good. When he was arrested. Oh, how? But yeah, so, and like, yeah, it's a Fred movie. Uh, he Literally, the, the point of the Fred movie is Fred wants to sing with a girl who's played by a pop star who's blonde. And, like, he wants to sing with her and shit. And that, that's what Russell wants, too. So it's, it's a thing. Cool. And then, as Russell is being arrested, uh, Chet is like, oh, dude, I'm so fucking sorry. Please, will you forgive me? He's, like, overly contrite about the whole thing. Which, if you ever met a cop, like... No. Right, he's like, I'm no. sorry, I have to arrest you. Like, Russ is, like, that white, but he, even he can't get that much deference from cops, no. I guarantee you. Because he looks different. Everyone hates him because he looks different. And including the people in prison hate him because he looks different, right? Uh, the people in prison hate him because he looks different. Like, he goes to work out, and he's like, yo, what's up? Like, just, like, nodding at people, like, yo, what's up? <laughs> and they like, they, like, give him a nasty look, and then he just whimpers away and hides in his cell and just watches TV for the rest of his time there. Okay. And during this time in prison, he is visited by his sister, Allison, and she makes the most, like, the worst sin in this entire lecture. She sits him down and he's like, look, Russ, our parents have gotten you a good lawyer. You're going to be fine. In the meantime, listen to this. And it's an album made by Taylor Swift. She is the guilty gear. She did the thing. This is original sin. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> right? That's what happened. And sisters are bad. Sisters are bad, especially this one. Not even Women a real sister. Bad. Adoption isn't real, guys. <laughs> Dude, you're like a family. Um, <laughs> and so he, for the rest of his time in jail, he's just like sobbing and listening to Taylor Swift. And at this point, he's like let out. A lawyer gets him off with nothing. Uh, this felony charge. He was, he was charged with terroristic threats, which is like a specific threat of specific violence. And he gets off, no felony, no nothing. And at this point, he is obsessed with two things, law and Taylor Swift. And these obsessions will lead him to many great things, many not great things uh, in the coming minutes here. So Russell, <laughs> after he's let out of prison, his school contacts him, tells him never come back again. 
we'll just give you your diploma if you fucking leave. He's like, yeah, all right. Uh, and so <laughs> he's, he's a high school graduate now, and he's a, he's a small town boy, but he has big city dreams. He's from Evanston, Wyoming, and he moves to the big open-minded city of Salt Lake City, Utah, right? Oh. Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, the, the, the home of Mormonism, which, if you'll recall, didn't let black people in until they had a new revelation from God, like, four years ago. Uh, Did according you? According to Maddox, uh, Salt Lake City specifically is a very liberal place and is, like, the opposite of the rest of Utah. He said that one. Noted. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he gets through one semester of college at the uh, Latter-day Saints Business College, which is like, it's for ESL people, like people who are immigrants and new to the country, or people who like suck and want to get their GPA up, and then they go to an actual real school. It's like remedial like math, but for the entire school. Russell decides that he wants to get a degree at this school, and a paralegal degree at that, which, like, a degree in paralegaling is more trouble than it's worth, because it makes, th this one specifically, according to a classmate of his, the curriculum was like, dude, you can do anything a lawyer can do, except for, like, two things. Like, you're basically a lawyer, so it's okay if you act like a dipshit online. That's, but, only one semester before his parents call, like, it's, it, deal or no deal, it's the bank, it's the parents, they have all the money. And they are threatening to withhold it if Russell doesn't go on his mission. And so off he goes to fucking Arizona somewhere to teach sign language or something. Uh, and like three, he gets three months in, into this mission. He's like a well-behaved good boy, despite being like a, an atheist, as said earlier. And he goes to knock on someone's door. It's like an old crotchety man. He's like, ah, you fucking Mormons always being nice to me. And he like shoots at them. And they run away back to the car. And he's complaining to his guy, like, his, his associate. Like, this sucks. God isn't real. I don't believe in it anyway. I want to go home. And so this attempt fails. But he eventually does get kicked out, like, 20, like 20 or so months into this 24-month thing. Because he went to a strip club while on this mission for, like, God. Mormon God, so it's like, God. Uh, and... <laughs> He gets brought into, like, the disciplinary office after going to a strip club, taking a selfie with two of the other Mormon guys who went to the strip club with him, posting it on Facebook, and tagging them. So, like, he, not only did he go, but he also ratted out his, like, homies, and you don't do that. Like, this is, like, six, nine levels of rattery, <laughs> and I hate it. This, this skews me out almost more than some of the, like, shit that he does later, but we'll get to that. Uh, he gets kicked out after 21 months, and he's like, fine, I don't care about God. He's like, yeah. Uh, he dons his fedora, and... Oh, uh, another quick thing about the mission. He, like, constantly references, whenever he talks about it, that he only went to find himself. And because, apparently, like, young Mormon women like it when a dude has been on a mission. So he was fully expecting to just get, like, when he comes back, like, look at me, I'm Johnny Mormon. Like, loads of just Mormon girls begging for him, which did not happen and made Russell very disappointed. And so, yeah. So during his time at college, he's thriving, right? He has two jobs, a janitor at Walmart and janitor at the college. And he's like, he's making enough bank to semi-annually go to what is called the, like, um, do you know Dennis Hoff? He was in reality shows. Um, He's a guy who owns, like, 15 brothels in Nevada. Oh. And, <laughs> like, the only legal brothels in the country, right? And so Russell... He owns Mona's in Oka, Nevada? I think so. Cool. I uh, went to high school there, at the, where the Mona's is. Fun. I went to high school in that town where Russell... Did at the school. brothel. Yeah, I went to high school in the brothel. <laughs> fun, fun. Yeah. But, uh... Oh, yeah, uh, he goes there twice a year. He admits to have spending, spent, like, $15,000 in total across his, like, sex trips. Yeah. Those poor women. We'll get a bit more into that later, but... So, at some point, he finds a specific girl. Like, he got his eye on her. She's, like, the rest of the crowd is grayed out, and she's still in color, like an anime. Uh, and she's, like, 19. She's, like, tan. He's into that. And... Dennis Hoff's brothels are interesting because they're the only brothels that let you, like, text chat with the girls before going there. And 
there, there are text logs out there of like Russ, and I, he showed it to his boss once too, which is weird. There are text chats of him like going on for like paragraphs about like, oh this this and this, and I'm gonna make you my boyfriend. I'm gonna show you chivalry and shit, and then like a one line from her like hey, yeah smiley face, I uh, can't wait to see ya. So the day of uh, this girl's name is uh, her hooker name is Kiara by the way. Uh, so he's he's really into it. He shows up at work the day that he's supposed to go to Kiara's uh, in Nevada. He is in his full suit. He does a eight hour janitor shift in this suit. Meanwhile, asking anyone who comes up like, Russell, why are you in a fucking suit? This is Walmart, dude. Uh, he's like, oh, I'm going to go see my girlfriend after work, which, you know. He also, a little, little sidebar here. He also will do this with every time on Facebook, like someone interacts with him who is female, he will just start calling them his girlfriend. So don't associate with him if you're a girl. Isn't that how it works, though? If a woman interacts with me at all, I assume she's my girlfriend. Is this, this is like manifest destiny, is what you're saying. It's like, but for women. Yeah, correct. Okay. If she has interest in talking to you, she must want to bang. Honestly? Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's your words. Uh, <laughs> fucking bird. So, from here, he works at this shift, sweats in this suit, for the entire shift, gets on an Amtrak, sweats into the suit for another eight hours on the Amtrak. He bought some, like, Walmart flowers before he left, by the way. Uh, arrives at the Bunny Ranch. Uh, yeah, it's the Bunny Ranch this time. At, like, seven or eight in the morning. And it's just there. He gets, he take, gets taken from the Amtrak station to the ranch. And then his plan is he wanted to go to Olive Garden with this girl, Kiara. He bought what's known as the girlfriend experience, I think, where you, like, get to take him out on a date, and then, like, um, well, <laughs> Like in the anime Rental Girlfriend. I haven't seen it, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah. I heard it's... All right. Uh, well, you don't get to fuck in that, though. You just get the girlfriend experience. Okay, well, you don't get to fuck in this one, but we'll get to that <laughs> immediately. So, uh, he gets there. Olive Garden doesn't open for another two hours, because they're, like, a lunch restaurant. It's... Eight in the morning. What is what is he doing? What is he thinking? So they <laughs> he's just trying to eat family style for breakfast. They go to the hotel that he's like staying at and just sit on the bed making small talk for two hours. She's really uncomfortable with the whole thing because of course she is, and she's apparently according to the book she says like oh, I don't want to be here and the brothel made me do this, but there's no evidence of that because like we don't don't we're not gonna go after these people and. For this one, the farms have done a pretty good job of not, like, reaching out. But, like, I'm watching you, motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So they, like, two hours pass. They get driven in the limo to the Olive Garden. They have, like, an hour and a half of, like, Russell just sitting there eating unlimited breadsticks and pasta. And, like, Olive Garden is not a good, like, because his thought is, I'm going to take her out, and then we're going to fuck afterwards. And then she's going to be contractually obligated to fall madly in love with me because I brought a suit, I brought flowers, and I held the door open for her or something. <laughs> so he expects her to be like, ah, oh, pretty woman, basically. This does not happen. They get back to the brothel after Olive Garden, and he is informed that he has five minutes left with her. The clock started the minute he got there, and he didn't realize it, apparently. So they just sat on the bed for two fucking hours, did nothing. That's... And then he sues them. He, like, goes to court and he's like, well, she was... Uh, he, he, like, rages about it in his book. About, like, well, when you're going to the doctor, you don't have to specify that you want a clean needle, right? You, the doc what if the doctor just pulled out a rusty needle because you didn't say you specifically wanted a clean needle? That's the legal conclusions that this guy is making. That was, I think that was in the lawsuit, too. Uh, but yeah, uh, sorry. You gotta love when lofty metaphors start showing up in your legal documentation. Well, you're, it's not like, it, you're right though. Like, he is really bad at writing legally because he'll do stuff like, uh, in the Maddox lawsuit, he was like, oh, or so the plaintiff thought. Like, that kind of thing is all of his documents ever. All of his filings are filled with little colloquialisms and metaphors and references. At, at one point, he references um, Spider-Man, 
uh, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> and he, he cites it as being from Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. As if Tobey Maguire himself, like, wrote and directed not only the entire Spider-Man series, but the specific, like, films that he was in. He's, like, throwing a bitch fit at the brothel. And she's like, I don't know, I'm not a mind reader, dude. What do you, what do you want from me? And so he, got, he cucked himself, basically, is what happened. So, quick thing. Uh, I referenced it a little bit earlier, but his past employer was on one of uh, Nick Ricada's shows. Nick Ricada, subscribe, get him to 100,000, he's good. I'm pointing at the mic because it looks like a camera. Uh, one, of his, one of his past employers called, I think from Walmart, and apparently there was an incident where he like went into some sec I think it was a clearance section, and he just like thrashed, like Tommy Wiseau level, like, like threw everything off of the, the shelves, and then went to his supervisor and is like, um... Someone came up to me and assaulted me and pushed me into this cabinet because I'm disabled. And, and the guy's like, well, can you point him out? Or is there any video footage of it? And he's like, uh, she's in Canada. You wouldn't know her, basically. Uh, didn't happen. Like, it happened, but it, it, you wouldn't have seen it if it did happen, which it did. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm not calling Russell a liar because he would never lie, especially not to the court ever, which he does constantly. He would, like, <laughs> ask all of his coworkers out and every time someone came up to him, it's like, Russell, you're not sweeping right. He's like, it's because I'm disabled. Or like, you're, you're, making, you're making fun of me because I'm disabled. I'm doing it right. You're just wrong. So he like breaks down at the slightest criticism, like openly and publicly. He also like eats noisily and that, that's a trigger for me. <laughs> uh, that's just personal opinion. That's not a legal conclusion. I feel like the leaning on the the disability of it to get out of doing things is more of a crime than... Oh, you think noisily. so? Then you're going to love what he does for the rest of the lecture. Because that's all he does is lean on his disability and I just hope it works out, I guess. Uh, so, are any of you familiar with Farrah Abraham? Uh, you know, teen mom did yes, porn? Teen Mom did oh, porn, yeah. 16 and Pregnant. She Heck is also... Yeah. She's also, like... Minorly famous Wait, for. Did she do porn when she was sixteen? No, no after. No, no, no. no, no. Uh, she that did like a, you know. So really... she was a teen mom, then she did. Porn. And then she right. capitalized okay. on it. Right. She also like took a break from her four year old child. Says they're do they're like doing different things in life. It's like fine. it's not you, it's me, small child that I'm responsible right. for legally. <laughs> Literally just so Russell, I I need to here. Is my phone still here? No. Uh, I need to like read this aloud to you because it's too fucking ridiculous. Russell, when, when I first was researching this, I thought there was some campaign going on, like a marketing thing to win a date with Farrah Abraham. Uh, as I found out later, no, that's not the case. Russell just manufactures this like thing of like, there is a way to win a date with Farrah Abraham. And he makes a video. It's like meant to be a lyric video, but there's no music record. Like there's, there's music in the background, but there's no lyrics recorded to it. So he just flashes the lyrics on screen. And the reason it wasn't immediately obvious that it was a music video is because these lyrics are fucking awful. <laughs> and I'm gonna... They, they, there's no... This is, a const, this is a constant thing with Russell, where he'll write a song and he doesn't know what a rest is. So it's just like... It's just like a vocal line after vocal line, just, just <coughs> 10 sentences in a row that never stop that have no sense of rhythm or anything. He gets better later, but I don't care about that. <laughs> um, some of his songs are like unironically bangers and I would listen to them alone. So it has a four word. <laughs> <laughs> this first. What are your favorite Greer core songs? Okay, my favorite, my favorite is I Don't <laughs> Get You Taylor Swift. It's, it sounds like a, just, like a Justin Timber, Timberlake song from like the mid 2000s. It's produced pretty well, even. Is it him who is singing? No, 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 no. no okay. No, it's, it's He hires... Usually it's uh, this this New York... We'll get to that later, but it's Songcat Studios that he hires. Why does he have so much money? Um, he's a paralegal. We need to talk. No, he's not even that. We'll get... We'll, <laughs> he doesn't have money. He just, like... Okay. He, like, lives on as little as... Po it's kind of admirable when I say it like this, but he lives on as little as possible. So he can... Uh, so he can get... Song, like, he can commission songs from these major studios out in, like, New York and stuff. He, like, lives on literally nothing. Does he just get, like, disability or... No, 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 no. He's not that he's kind not of disabled. disabled no. 
uh, he's technically disabled, which is the best kind. Like, yeah. he's like, whenever someone threatens that, or whenever someone, like, says that he's not disabled, well, uh, according to the American with Disabilities Act, which he cites constantly... 2009. Of 2009, uh, if it impairs two or more life functions, I am disabled, technically, by the law. What are the two life functions? Ability to get laid and... <laughs> Well, he can't see for more than three seconds. Though. He can't drive, and he can't make a good decision. Well, that's that's a different that's a different disability. A but one, so okay, there's a foreword to this video of like him trying to get with Farrah Abraham. Uh, in 2013, Charlie Sheen said some very rude things about Farrah Abraham. Which, by the way, this is where he found out about ter uh, excuse me Farrah Abraham is. There's a video of Charlie Sheen being a dick to Farrah Abraham. And Russell's like, is that a, an attractive female that I can white knight for? Holy fuck, sign me up. So that's what happens. Uh, I was deeply offended as Farrah is a beautiful young lady. Sorry, Charlie, but women aren't products or objects. They're the closest thing to heaven. I wrote this song to let Farrah know that she's perfect in every way. And keep in mind as I read this that these are supposed to be like lyrics to like a 120 BPM 44 like beat. This is like not avant-garde shit. I'd kind of like to meet Farrah Abraham, but I'm scared out of my mind to catch her attention because she's so elegant and beautiful, everything wonderful. Yeah, this is a shout out and I'm gonna ask her out. All those other guys don't know how to treat you, but I do. Living with a facial paralysis has taught me to be polite and kind to others. <laughs> I have my associates and I work at a law firm. He's a mail room guy, by the way. Uh, but my disability doesn't define me. The music I play and the words I write define me. We can take a limo and go wherever you want to go. Catch a movie, walk around the city, go to a fine dine and wine. It's unclear what he means by that, but... Hey, who doesn't want to go to a fine dine and wine? I mean, fine dine and wine. Sky's the limit. Everything's on me. Do you like to dance? Will you follow my footing? I won't lead you wrong. I just want to show you the best night of your life and let you know that you're not a trophy prize. Will you accept the date kindly? Smiley face emoticon. So... Does he say smiley face emoticon? Uh, there's a smiley face emoticon at the end of the song lyrics. Again, it's unknown why he exists. Uh, so, from here, a, he posts this on Twitter and, like, ats her. And a Twitter intern who was, like, in charge of her account liked this and, like, favorited it. And to him, this is a legally binding contract that says, Farrah Abraham now has to go on a date with me. And so, he sues her, takes her to court. The minute he realizes that, one, she will not be showing up to Utah Small Claims Court to defend herself and suck his... I'm gonna get angry Morbius if I... Mobius syndrome. Suck his Mobius syndrome, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he realizes that, wait, this is not important because all I want is celebrity attention. And so, the minute, instead of lawyers, Farrah, or instead of Farrah, lawyers are gonna show up and, like, they're gonna sue me and I'm gonna have to be charged damages... The minute he realizes that, he drops the suit. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you know how stalkers, like, escalate their behavior over time? This is him, like, testing the waters of stalkery, and until he becomes a convicted cyberstalker, which we'll get to in a bit. For now, there's more, there's another video, and it's bad. It's like, the only reason that I know it's meant to, like, the song lyrics are meant to be song lyrics is because he reuses and, like, recycles this exact structure like many of the lyrics for this one in a song called win a date with kylie jenner later on but like so after being ignored and after like writing up his lawsuit he makes a second video and it's like to a bright like dancey like breakup track like whoa i'm out of here uh and the the instead of being a powerpoint it's like a like a free trailer text.com kind of thing so it's also too good not to read aloud to you right now. So I followed you from afar and have decided... Each of these are like individual sentences stopped with periods. And have decided it's time you know that there are decent guys in the world. I like you for your smile, not for your boobs or anything else. It would mean a lot if you said yes and allowed me. I would like to take you to dinner and hang out with you and be friends. Of course. <laughs> if it leads to more, then awesome. But I'm trying to show you that you are amazing. Please say yes, exclamation point, exclamation point. Now, she did not say yes, regrettably. And Russell was heartbroken. Uh, and thus, he took her to court. He pissed himself and withdrew the lawsuit. But now, his dreams 
kind of evolved into America's Got Talent. And it's bad. There's a video and I'll probably show it because like it's mostly just Russell dancing and it's a bad it's a bad video. He like starts it off with like a him playing piano. He's like, uh here's how you can overcome your disability, because I, Russell Greer, have overcome my disability. And then he like gets up and dances to Nicki Minaj's sh Starships. It's bad. It's really fucking I hate that song. It's so he sends a tape to America's Got Talent and like he doesn't make it at all. So he like he starts a Facebook campaign and a bunch of change.org campaigns to get him on the fucking thing to America's Got Talent. It doesn't work and he has a bitch fit. Also, one of the hosts he tries to get a hold of personally, Heidi Quim, he writes a couple songs for her. Uh, these are the only songs that I could find that he sings himself, and they're as good as you would imagine. Really? He can't, like, talk, right? No, he so... can't. Well, he can't, like, uh, when I say he can't talk, I mean, like, in the sense that his vocal cords physically do work, but the sound that he makes with them, one, nobody would want to listen to. Two, require much slurping to be accomplished. So it's bad. <laughs> like this is because his mouth is Yeah, up he there. cannot he cannot close he his lips. All of it. So what does it sound like when he's singing? Like that? Like what Riley like that's a really like Hello, girl. Hello, That was but like slightly higher. Okay, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, really he can't move his fucking lips. So he's like threatened and while he's working as a janitor and right like overlapping with when he does the America's Got Talent shit and the Farrah Abraham shit. He comes back to home base, which is Taylor Swift, right? And <laughs> home based. Taylor Swift is based and red pilled. Yeah. Uh, he goes in on the Taylor Swift shit 100%. Like, there's no going back from Swift now because he sees a article where it's like, oh, a couple boys asked Taylor Swift to prom and it was cute. And she said yes. And like, she went with them. And it was cute. And Russell takes this as, wait a minute. So if I do something unique to stand out, Taylor Swift is legally obligated to sleep with me and marry me and make my Holocaust film. Got it. And so this is the legal opinion that carries us through the rest of the Taylor Swift parts of the lecture. And it's a good one. Because Russell is like a huge nice guy. Also, he was partially popularized from the Nice Guys subreddit because every time he sees a, a famous person, especially, like, a famous girl or, like, even, like, a Instagram thoughty with, like, 30,000 followers, he'll, be, he'll, like, relentlessly DM them and be like, you deserve a better life than what you have right now, which is, like, modeling Fashion Nova and getting vacations to Cancun. The best imaginable lifestyle. Literally, like, dating a bunch of fucking football players and having millions of people wanting to cut off their fucking left thumb to sleep with you once. Like, you deserve a better life than that. And me, Russell Greer, who was living in a one-man like one -man apartment or one-bedroom apartment in the bad side of Salt Lake City, I'm gonna give that to you. And he, at this point, he has a song commissioned. Like, you deserve a better life. And it's a generic one... And he kept it private on his SoundCloud for the longest time and sent it to just girls like, hey, baby, I, sent, I made this for you, specifically you. And then he actually does at one point make a specific, like, special personalized song for an Instagram girl, uh, this Dominican girl named Giovanna. And during the song, he, like, calls her hot, like an enchilada, which, and then she brings spice to life. Uh... So what he does is kind of sneaky. He starts production on this song, which is real bad. It's called, he has like this epiphany while he's working as a janitor. And it specifically says that while he's cleaning a toilet, he has the bright light bulb moment. It's like, I get you, Taylor Swift. And that's, I get you, Taylor Swift. And that is the defining moment because it's a song that he hates. And I want to remind him of it at every moment because it's it's bad, but in a like it's like the room of songs. It's like a the, the easiest chord progression is like da 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 da, and that just for a minute and a half with obtuse or not even like just direct references to Taylor Swift songs. 
in the lyrics. Like, just a, a s <laughs> it's nonsense. It's a bad song, and I love it. Russell, please make all of my music from now on. I'm not fit or worthy. Uh, and so it takes him two years to make the easiest song ever to make. He gets it produced by, well, there was one studio who, like, took his money and didn't give him a song, but then Songcat Studios in New York City, he gets it produced by them. It's good. It's, like, functionally good, but, of course, the music is bad. And he told, it, he told them to add flavor to it, which, of course, it's unclear what that means. So yeah. he gets it. He's like, well, I don't like this. It sounds like Sesame Street. I told you to add flavor. There is no flavor here, sir. That's what he says to this guy, Chris, from Songcat Studios. And Chris from Songcat Studios is not yeah, having it. Apparently, he's like, oh, did, uh, he's like mocking Russell. Oh, is someone having a bad day? Did you poop your pants, baby boy? Like, uh, some, like someone's not grateful, is what he says in the book. Just being a dick. That's not real, I guess. But he's like, so he sends, he sends this song to Taylor Swift, being like, you know, that's the best I'm going to get this time. I'm going to send it to her anyway. And I'm going to explain myself when she inevitably sees it, because she has to see it. That's how it works. Another quick sidebar. Russell is a one-step thinker, but he is the kind of one-step thinker who, when his best-case scenario does not happen, he will specifically, like, be like, but I did this, and also I'm going to make it happen anyway. I wasn't wrong. Nothing has ever been wrong, except for everyone else who is wrong. Right? That's, <laughs> that's really, like, the core of this... He doesn't think he can be wrong, ever. Uh, Seems like a pretty bitchin' way to live life, if you ask me. Yeah. Except mindset. for 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 you, for for you, or really anyone in this room, it could work fine. But for Russell, it doesn't work because he all, he doesn't have like the brains, the the brainular power to back up his retardish, retardation. I've been <laughs> I've, I've been trying to not say that word during this lecture, but. Fuck it, whatever. Russell's a retard. He does not... Okay, he specifically says that he does not like being called a square-faced retard. So I'm gonna do it right now. Russell, you are a... You are a square-faced retard. Not... Physically, you are fine. Like, the, his face and the fact that he's, like, 5'3", like, you know how the Smurfs have, like, the anti-Smurfs? And... Like, like Russell is that, but for hobbits. He's 5'3", he's greasy as fuck, He's bad. And, like, he, he's really thin and, like, small and frail, even though he constantly posts on Facebook how he's, like, bulking up. And even there's, like, a... Later, there's a... Once he finds out that Taylor Swift is, like, after him, like, the secret police, uh, he's, like, he becomes... He kind of has this thing where he becomes a, um... What's those people? Targeted individuals, like, gang stalking. He thinks that he's one of those. But for Taylor Swift specifically, like, there's a guy named Horatio. Or he's not actually named Horatio. That's a headcanon. Uh... There's this, like, Mexican guy who comes out of a black Volkswagen Jetta after he drafts the Taylor Swift lawsuit, puts, like, puts him against the pavement, is, like, holds a gun to his head, like, you better, you better stop the lawsuit, essay, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you. And then he, like, fires the gun, and it's not a real gun. He's like, it might be real next time, uh, socio, so don't, don't get any ideas. <laughs> but that's later. Um, he hasn't even started the lawsuit shit yet. He thinks that he can send this thing to her, explain that it's bad because he doesn't have Taylor Swift's, like, production house, and then, by that, become Taylor Swift's boyfriend and also become big in the music biz. Yeah, naturally. That's how you do it's it. That's how Harry Styles did it. It's how you know. It, it's who you know. It's, that's how you do it. Uh, but th this is Russell's Kokoro wish, basically. It's his guiding philosophy to the rest of everything. Uh... He starts a... It's not really clear. He calls it... And he, he does, like, a poster board of, like, hey, please date me, Taylor Swift. Uh, donate to... Me. Like, kickstart my ambitions to date Taylor Swift. Hashtag swiftly wooing Taylor. Uh, which is, as he points out in his book, a subtle reference to her name. Think about that. Uh, and it's unclear whether it's a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe because he will constantly refer to it as a GoFundMe. So... I'm confused. He got $150 out of, like, 2000 Somehow, someone gave him money. Uh, and in order to get this picture of him with the sign, he goes around to people at, like, the college, his cafeteria, just be like, hey, will you take a picture with me in this sign? Just going around to everyone he can. And it eventually someone does it, but not really. Like, 
no one wants to. Uh, have you ever... He... I almost did it here a couple times, but, like, he'll run out of space at the end of a margin and, like, do the thing where it's, like, becomes smaller, uh, the text becomes smaller as the thing goes, mm -hmm. and it's real, it's real bad. Like, just, if you want this, th if this is going to be the th one thing about you that Taylor Swift sees, shouldn't it be, like, good, but no, Russell, like, so you know how, like, God is infallible and, like, can't do wrong? Like, that's what he thinks he is. <laughs> Literally, he also says that he has the um, gift of prophecy. Uh, this is while he is a professing like atheist. That he has a gift of prophecy, and that people have discriminated against him for his religion of being Mormon, despite being again, like he posts like on a like r slash atheism, and does like the like the, you know those Facebook like image macros of like is God is God is real? What if bad <laughs> thing happened to me? That's what he like posts this shit, and it's like. You can't be a Mormon and an atheist at the same time. It's just not a thing. So he's an idiot. So when he's making this song, he knows that he's running on a very strict deadline because Taylor Swift just broke up with Calvin Harris, her boyfriend at the time, who was like a DJ. He knew like a song that people knew. And time is running out before Taylor Swift gets with a new guy and becomes married to him because apparently he says that it's a running joke in the industry at this point that Taylor Swift can't find a wife. This is before all the Stefan Molly new shit with the eggs happening. Uh, this is just Russell being weird, thinking that things are happening that are not ever. He, incidentally, he believes that there's a lot of mustache twirling just going on at all times, like a cartoon. He, and this is his, the first of his like enemies, is Calvin Harris, because he's like, oh, he didn't even do anything for Taylor Swift. Right? Like, he just hates him and hates, like, every single guy that is ever... <laughs> Who is Calvin Harris exactly? He's a DJ, and he did a song back in the day that was big, I guess. I mean, did he, like, date Taylor Swift? Yes, he did date Taylor Swift. That's what I... Yeah. Like, they were together for a while. They broke up. Russell's like, yeah, but this means I have to act real fast. Right? <laughs> On this song. So it... Russell graduates, uh... He spends five years at this two-year college to get a two-year degree. Oh uh, he claims that he had straight A's, but no, obviously not. Uh, so he's a paralegal now. He gets fired immediately from his paralegal job because they find his Kickstarter or GoFundMe about Taylor Swift. So from here, it's... Yeah, from here, he, like after he gets fired, he goes to his friend, uh, Ken. Ken is a man who I also don't believe exists, and I want you to consider whether Ken is real throughout the rest of this lecture, because stuff happens, and we'll <laughs> Alright, back. Ken, fake. I think he's fake. Ken is just a fucking tulpa. Uh, Ken listens to the song and is like, yeah, this is shit. You should probably sue Songcat, but Russell doesn't go through with it. Um, Russell pays money. He, like, goes to some shady service that, like, gives you the address and the phone number of, like, celebrity agents, I guess. So he pays too much money to get in contact with Taylor's agent, Jay Shouties. And... That's how Hollywood works. Yeah, that's just... I mean, it's in Nashville, but... Can I get a holla for the Shouties in the house? Nashville is also Hollywood. Exactly. So he sends an email to Jay Shouties with the subject line, don't have the... Loki looks, but I do have the music hooks. And this is a... First of all, he's rhyming so that he, so he can get his foot in the door music-wise. Because he, he desperately wants to write music for Taylor Swift. But that's not as important as having sex with Taylor Swift. Uh, which he... I agree. <laughs> uh, and she was... He wants to reference that... Because Loki. He wants to reference that, he, uh, that she's dating Tom Hiddleston at the time. So he wants to be like, yo, I'm... I'm aware of Taylor Swift. I'm in the know about the old T-Swizz. That's what he thinks is going to happen. So he sends an email with the fucking song in it, like, as a thing. And shockingly, Jay fucking replies. Jay is like, sorry, sir, but we can't accept music. We can't accept unsolicited works of Taylor because no recording artist can. In case you don't know, there's a thing where just, like, even if you hear a song that someone sent you, and it's even somewhat similar to a thing that you later make, you can get, like, sued, or the threat of lawsuits. 
Uh, and yeah, he opens the email in his fuck in the bathroom at his job. So he's just like shitting on company time, which I respect. I don't do that. My job, I don't do it. But I, I, I know what I know. What, I know the struggle. Um, so they said we don't we don't take unsolicited music works, and he's like, no, 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 you don't understand. It's not a music work. It's not a thing. It, it's not a thing for Taylor to do. It's a thing to express my appreciation. And also, if, if Taylor likes the song, I'll do some songs for her. So it's like a sneaky way of getting his foot in the door again. Yeah. He throws a tantrum in the email that he responds with after. And for some reason or other, it's just... Like, he doesn't put anything in the body of the email. He shows a screenshot in his book. He just... The entire email is the subject line. And, again, the reason for this is unclear. Maybe he doesn't know what the enter button is. But, yeah, he somehow takes this we don't accept unsolicited works. Not as we don't accept music that wasn't specifically called for. As we don't accept gifts at all, which he's like, oh, that's a lie. I saw you accept gifts here, and then here, here, and here. And then, oh, God, the paper cranes. Russell has a specific, like, hate boner for, are you, are you guys familiar with, um, you probably read it in middle school, uh, Sadako and the 1,000 Paper Cranes. Yeah. It's, okay. So this, this girl, I guess, got cancer after being part of the, 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 the radiation at some, the Japanese got bombed cool. because of Harry S. Truman. That happened, and this girl got radiation poisoning out of that. Yeah. And there's some Japanese like myth that if you do, fold a thousand paper cranes, you get a wish. And she folded a thousand paper cranes and then died, and it was sad. Uh, so Taylor Swift's yeah, mom. Yeah, no God. Yeah, atheism. Fuck yeah. If God is real, why do bad things happen to good people? Uh. Mental fortitude, what do you mean? Right. If it doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. You're on your walk to... I think, I think radiation poisoning and cancer <laughs> might Russell just Bear. be strong enough to kill you. Russell Stupidity Bear. is not hard enough to kill, strong enough to kill you because Russell is almost 30. Uh, but, so he... Uh, they send Taylor Swift's mom 1,989 paper cranes in a reference to 1989, her album. And also, because the cancer thing. She has cancer, and... Russell just doesn't, it does not fucking compute with Russell. These paper cranes, he's like, why would you need paper cranes? Like, what are you going to do with fucking paper cranes? That's what he, like, he rages on for, like, a page in his book about how much he, like, how useless they are. Like, what's she going to do with your song, also? It's also an ephemeral, like, gesture. It's a gift, but not, like, not for a utilitarian purpose. And he doesn't get it. But... Yeah, so he also posts on Facebook that he wants Taylor... He calls Taylor Swift's mom a fat bitch and hopes that she dies from her cancer around this time. So maybe he was like that... Maybe he was a bit anxious at the time. We don't know. So he gets he gets a call from Jay Shouty. He, like, he's at work. He sees, oh, it's a Tennessee number. I'm going to run to the bathroom and answer it. By the time he gets there, uh, it's already gone to voicemail. And he hears the voicemail from Jay Shouty. And it's like... Sorry, Russell, we don't... Like, he was being very kind, and, like, inordinately so. Like, sorry, bud, we don't... We can't take that song. I know it's a song for her to listen to and not to do, but, like, we're contractual. Our hands are bound. We can't do anything about it. And he has another, like, big pee-pee-poo-poo fit about it. And from here, he goes home, and uh, presumably, like, at 7 p.m., he falls asleep, and he has a dream... And this dream is where the celebrity cameo from earlier happens, and it's great. Uh, so he spawns in, like, this, this desolate, like, world. Oh, there's nothing in it but, like, craggy mountains and thunder. Lots of thunder and, like, lightning and clouds. But out in the distance, there's, like, a... He specifically references what kind of castle... It's, like, a castle from Germany that, like... It's just that but red, and there's, like, gardens and orchards and shit around it. It's, like, a place where life is, and life is plentiful. And he's like, oh, I see that. But Taylor Swift, like, and, and like, it zooms. Apparently, there's like a cut to Taylor Swift at the top of this castle in her chambers, like sobbing because Russell isn't there to fuck her, I guess. She's like sobbing. There's teardrops on her guitar. Subtle reference to her book or her song, Teardrops on My Guitar. Yeah. Uh, and cuts back to Russell and a bird, fall, like, 
lands on his shoulder. It's an owl, and this owl reportedly has the voice of Morgan Freeman. And this owl says, you know, go to her, Russell. You will, she, she wants, she, she doesn't care about money or fame or anything. All she cares about is effort. And you just got to try really hard, and Taylor Swift will notice you. That's what, that's what Morgan Freeman, the, the black owl, says here. Uh, literally, it, it says that he's black, so like... Is it an acid? No. Is but the like, owl wrong? Is she aware of Russell Greer in any capacity? She's not. No, she's not. She, it comes real close later, but that, uh, that was more than enough for Russell to completely spiral and go into, like... That, 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 we'll get to it. <laughs> you can't... And then, Russell being... the Again, he's a class clown from earlier. Russell being a retarded fucking idiot that he is. He's like, wait a minute. Before, as the owl is like ready to get away, he just gave this motivational speech. Wait a minute. Aren't you going to say who? And he's like, that's fucking racist, dude. Don't. Why would you? Why would you? Th the bird like chides him for being bird racist. And I love it. Uh, so off he goes to the castle where Taylor Swift is. And standing in front of this castle are like two like armored guys with like their swords. And they take off their helmets to reveal that they are her agents, Taylor Swift's agents. And they're like, sorry, Mr. Greer, we can't let you proceed any further. And then they like literally just kick his shit in. And then he wakes up. It's like 10 p.m. Uh, now, I want you to ask yourself a question. Could this, ha has anyone ever had a dream that is like this literal, that like has like cinematography and like shots and like cuts? Like this is not a thing that ever happened, right? I've never dreamed. Understood. I don't think Russell has ever dreamed either. I literally think he's like an NPC who just got too funny. Uh, and he's being punished by the reality computer <laughs> for being funny. Uh, so he's like, ah, he just jumps out of bed, freaks out. It's like 10 at night when he wakes up again. So upon waking up, he sends the same email to Jay again. And Jay's like, sorry, dude, I can't help you. What, what do you want me to tell you, dude? But he says it, like, politely. Because he's an agent and professional. And then he, like, gets really pissed off. Because apparently there was some flood or some hurricane. Taylor Swift donated to the relief fund. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what, what are these random people, what do they do? What do they earn? Or what do they do to earn Taylor Swift's attention? And, like, calls them random people. Like, that's fucking diabolical anyway he he's like i'm not a stalker right for for doing all this crazy shit i'm not a stalker even though my situation is like at this point he like goes after her family starts like sending gifts to her family that are totally not like anthrax or pipe bombs oh, and well not actually they're like he sends he sends them each like a ufps box with a letter in it that's personalized like to the, to the mom, he's like, hey, I'm glad you're better from cancer, and I want to hang out with you, Taylor, and Taylor. And then he's sends to her brother, like, hey, uh, you're cool, I want to hang out with you and Taylor. So, yeah. Like, a reader might think this is crazy, is what he's, like, he's like, you know, I'm, I know the situation is a lot like a beautiful mind, or fucking one hour photo, but it's not crazy, because I know I'm not crazy, and... That's how you know that you're not crazy, is if you know you're not crazy. Right. right. That's the easiest conclusion. So, from here, this fails, because he talks to, like, the UPS guy, and he's like, dude, there's, like, th So, continued attempts to get with Taylor's fucking family. <laughs> um, he contacts Austin Swift, Taylor's brother, and immediately, it real like, Austin Swift does not answer, fucking obviously. So what he does is he contacts an unverified Austin Swift account. And then Austin, like, that Austin Swift account is like, yeah, sure, fuck yeah, uh, send him on. And it's just some random guy named Austin. Just some random guy named Austin Swift that he just, like, DM'd. And I guess the guy played along. So he starts to sue fucking, or like, before he sues Taylor, he, like, goes to the news with his problem. And, like, uh, Taylor Swift is neglecting me. I'm a fan. Why? I need attention from Taylor Swift, even though if she acknowledged every single fan, all those random people, which she's one of, if you acknowledge all of them, then that would be her part-time, or her full-time job, rather. Like, have any of us here worked retail? 
Okay. I've worked fame. <laughs> I, I see. Uh, Thank you, dude. So at retail, like I, I worked retail at a very like in a very small town of like maybe like five ten thousand people, and you go in there on certain days and it's fucking packed, right? You need like people, like personnel, to man the line or else it grows. Like one guy can't just take all these customers. Like imagine that, but on a like gigantic cosmic scale, that would be Taylor Swift's life. Like nonstop customer service. With fucking 12-year-olds. That's why it's not an expectation legally that celebrities should pay attention to everyone who contacts them. Obviously. I'm explaining that for Russell. Uh, with apologies to my Twitter DMs that I don't get back to most of the time. Russell specifically, though, um, I know he searches his name on YouTube and gets, like, alerts. So, he goes to the news with this story of injustice, and specifically... This one, like, hot Eastern European chick who he's harassed repeatedly for every time he, like, needs news coverage on something, he goes to her. Uh, I wonder why. Uh, Tits. You know, I didn't think of that before, but might just be. So, after the packages, he... Man, he goes... Sorry, this is just... I'm rereading this and re-understanding. Like, the words are coming back into my mind as I, like, re-make sense. And it just, just un- it doesn't make sense. It's like looking at a brain buster, like, a, like one of those LSD things. It doesn't make... It, your, your mind can't compute it. Russell literally says, he's like, his mind, as he's in Ken's office again, his mind is churning like a Dell computer, he says. He's talking to Ken, and Ken is... He's like, yeah, buddy, uh, Taylor Swift, she's cool. But she obviously did something wrong here. So what you need to do is you need to go and sue Taylor Swift. This is where the first lawsuit comes from. There's times three. The first of three, Ken, uh, apparently, who I don't think is real, of course, tells him to sue her. It's bad. Uh, and then, oh, yeah, the reason he, he sues her kind of comes to him in, like, a vision while he's in Ken's office. Like, all of... The te- it's it's impossible to explain it because he's fucking retarded. But all of the text from various like posters and stuff in Ken's office come off of the post off of like the degrees and stuff like unknown from Pokemon the third movie that shit and like yeah. form the word duty in front of him. He's like, wait a minute, duty? That's it. Taylor Swift owes me a duty to suck me my penis and to <laughs> disclaimer like. She needs to make a disclaimer on every single social media post that this offer, like, many will enter, few will win kind of thing, right? Like, <laughs> few will win Taylor Swift, literally. Uh, so after, like, having this, this beautiful revelation, he goes, he has, like, a little quest. He goes around Salt Lake City talking to every single lawyer. There's a little montage of, like, a lawyer laughing on the other side of the phone for, like, five minutes at him. And then... Uh, some other lawyer like, tells him why he's wrong, but it's a little... He's like, yeah, you're being too harsh to me. I think you're wrong. Yeah, well, fuck you. Like, so what he does now is be's a pro se litigant. And pro se litigant is English for fucking stupid. Don't do this. Don't be this. Because that means that you're representing yourself in court, and you, you are not a lawyer. You don't know what you're doing. He has, a, like, a war room meeting with Ken. Like... He and Ken are, like, going back and forth, like, discussing the merits of his case. And eventually, like, Ken just throws up his hands and is like, yeah, go, go ahead, dude. You're right. Even though I inspired this idea, I'm kind of against it. But Ken who is not real. Ken who is not real. But he's like, hey, come back to me every time you have an update on Taylor. And speaking of, okay, this is not Russell's first pro se lawsuit this is i think the second uh, no 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 no. this is uh, during this point of the timeline this is like third or fourth but big one that we need to go back to because i'm doing this kind of linear or kind of not it's like a tarantino flick but less art um so russell wakes up one day uh, i think this is after him getting banned from the bunny ranch which he's like one of maybe like a dozen people globally who has been banned from the bunny ranch brothel of course not uh he gets up one day and he gets into his thinking chair i'm gonna make gamergate look like a fucking joke
That's what he says to himself. Because not like not only can women not be in games, but they also cannot not be in Russell's pants. Specifically prostitutes. He want he sues the state of Utah to legalize prostitution. Oh, base. Right? I mean, I think prostitution should be legalized. It's fine. Do it. I was wondering what you meant when you said that he did some great things at the start of the lecture. I was like, when are we going to get to these great things he did? <laughs> now I understand. Yeah, he sues the state of Utah, and... Yeah, he just... It, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, I, all of his arguments are wrong, but they're only wrong because he made them. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it, it's... Like, he discredits things. He discredits things by... Truth is relative to how shitty this guy is. So what he does, this is his, like, strategy. This is his, like, underwater backgammon moment. What he does, he goes through, and he, he goes up onto, like, the utah.com slash start a business website. He starts a business that is called the Mile High Neon. And neon is short for the Greek word porneon, which means, like, fuck or something. <laughs> and the more you know the more you know Greek lessons with me um, he does the in- word porn also come from that word yes yes it does well por- porn por- I'm not going to get into Greek because I <laughs> a biblical Greek lecture next week tomorrow actually um, he recognize like he he registers a business in the state of Utah that is like the, the business plan for it is it is a brothel and because the state has an, a thing where if, like, if you send in a business thing online, it's just for the name of the business. And, like, this floor plan is viable. There's not, like, no fire escape, right? That's, this floor plan is good. That's all that does is it gives you, like, an LLC. You have to pay, like, your $150 fee. It's an automatic computerized process. So then in his lawsuit against the state of Utah, he cites that, like, look, you approved me for a business license for this this uh, brothel, so now you have to legalize prostitution because you okayed a brothel, right? And he also puts out a business plan for the Mile High Neon. I was just trying to find the specific plan. It's a Greek building, like a Greek structures. There's like pillars and shit. And it's like Dennis Hoff's brothel, but all of the girls are fired once they turn 24. Uh, pretty based, man. Uh, gotta say, he wants employees to take a drug test and a, like, a sexual transmitted disease test every, like, week, every two weeks, and then a personal progress report sent to him about how they're doing in their, like, personal life every two weeks. And he also wants to, like, you know, sample the wares whenever he gets a chance. Kind of like Dennis Hoff, but he's... De- Dennis Hoff can close his mouth. And is, like, good at being a sleaze. Uh, he, he goes on... A, okay, I need to read the fucking... This is, Russell is not good at short titles. His, the title for his, like, manifesto about the prostitution thing is Why I'm Making It Legal for Your 18-Year-Old Daughter to Get in Bed with a Complete Stranger for Only 500 Bucks, a short essay from a pro se litigant who is challenging the Utah brothel ban. And, like, he, got, he gets a hate boner for uh, Jimmy Carter. Uh, his, his kind of... the fuck? Sorry. Uh, his, his, like... Thesis statement for this document, it's like, t- it's a 10 page, like, pamphlet, is the state is controlling my destiny and my penis. So that's what he says going into this document. It's just, most of it is just him talking about his personal prostitution story, how it made it feel, him feel comfortable with his body or whatever. And yeah, sure. Uh, but Russell Greer, it's, he's bad. Because uh, he also, like, he under, he shoots himself in the foot because he, like, he tries to apply the findings in some, like, court case about homosexuality, as if that's the same thing, or, like, abortion. Uh, and then he... So, the new, like, America has a common law thing where it's... You know, we can use the rulings in a specific court case that's similar to this in another court, like, to influence the what happens. Russell takes this a step further and is like, I'm going to cite a Canadian law in this American document, which you can't do. That's, like, stupid. And this is also where his catchphrase, uh, suck me my penis, comes from. Uh, it's, he was describing his... <laughs> suck me my penis. He was describing, like, an a intimate experience he had with a prostitute. <laughs> so, yeah. 
that that's his goal. He just wants he just wants his his PP sucked. <coughs> Uh, so, from here we're going to cut to a courtroom. This is where we meet Based Scordis. Based Gregory Scordis is a lawyer in Salt Lake City. He is the best lawyer in Utah, which is not saying much, but that's what he is. Uh, how he's introduced in the book, this is like the fucking big one. Uh, he's introduced in like a courtroom setting where he's like aggressively like, it's like tormenting this like little girl on the stand, like yelling at like, did you see it with your own eyes, this, like, girl being raped? Did you actually see it? Like, he just, like, is a dick. That's how we are first introduced to him. Then he gets into his limo, and <laughs> he's, like, being driven home in a limo, I guess. He calls his driver. He's like, hey, uh, drive me home. And he gets a call from Jay Shouties, and there's some, like, mustache twirling. Ha, 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 yes. Uh, uh, fucking, there's this, there's this boy, and we need to make sure that he doesn't fuck shit up for Taylor. Uh, do anything in your power to make sure that this does not get to the news, this does not get to Taylor Swift herself, and that this does not ever see, like, the light of day, basically. Uh, he's, like, the... He's, like, kind of a recurring villain, like, the, the Miles Edgeworth, kind of, of this series. Uh, so, literally right after Squirtus is introduced, he goes back into his dream world. And in his dream world, he, like kind of rises, like, picks himself up, and the agents are there, like, laughing at him or whatever, and he tries to, like, do this thing, like, lucid dreaming of, like, oh, I'm gonna think real hard, and a bazooka is gonna come into my hand. No, not happening. So then he's like, oh, the oldest trick in the book. Oh, agents, look over there. There's, like, Calvin Harris is pissing in a lemonade ocean or something. That's what he, like, is in the book. <laughs> so I, I'm not making this up, just so you know. Uh... He, he runs up the stairs to Taylor Swift, and she's, like, she's sobbing, but she's, like, really happy. He's like, Russell, you finally came. I've been waiting forever. And they kiss, and then he, like, wakes up, and he out loud shouts, I was getting to the best part. And, yeah, that, that like, a, what, like a funky little zoom in, zoom out kind of thing is what I imagine. They're, like, from a 90s show, like, Fresh Prince. Russell is Will Smith. Oh. Cocked by reality. <laughs> <laughs> we got, aren't we all? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, a a after he wakes up, uh, another dreadful thing happens. He checks his email, and he gets an email from Based Scordis, Based Greg Scordis, uh, that uh, his ta Taylor's family knows about him, and they find him invasive and troubling. These three words will rule the rest of Russell's life. He literally claims in the lawsuit against uh, Null of the Kiwi Farms in Monday Map, presumably, because they co-own the Kiwi Farms, that uh, these three words gave him PTSD. And then apparently there's a therapist that said that. Does uh, Russell think that Monday Map co-owns the Kiwi Farms with Null? Mm, unclear. Okay. Why, why did you... He didn't actually sue... Monday Matt, that was just a joke. Because oh, okay. It's also like a meme that Monday Matt runs the Kiwi Farms. Uh, but yeah, he, he screams out in anguish, and like, da, he his heart level falls to zero, and then he goes to Scordis' office to like scream, like he screams at the, the secretary, I need to see Greg Scordis now. Because th this is slander and lies, even though it's like probably like 100% true. And then Scordis approaches him, puts his hand on his shoulder, hey, motherfucker, I... You will not sue Taylor Swift. If you do, I will, like, kill you, dude. Uh, I'm gonna make sure this never sees the light of day. He, like, reiterates what he said. Uh, and then the guards haul him out. Apparently he has guards. But... Yeah. Like, there's a lot of just... He, after, after this, he's, like, tormented by the public. Because everyone recognizes him on the street, like... The lawsuit hasn't even gone to court yet. There's no, nothing about this happens yet. But everyone is like, oh, hey, you're the guy who's suing Taylor Swift. You're too ugly for Taylor. Like, just out loud saying this, apropos of nothing. He starts arming himself with rocks whenever he walks around so that he can, like, throw it at windshield, like, people who, with cars who honk at him. So, like, this is him, like, kind of just descending, but I don't believe a word of it to be actually real, because why would you... Why, I, you know, I say, why would you record this and incriminate yourself? But then it is Russell Greer, so... 
Russell is claiming that he has become popular enough for people to call him out on the street. Right, right. But he's also, like, a big social media guy, according to himself. He has a thousand Facebook followers. Uh, Wow, I envy that. Right, right. Facebook Facebook followers mean nothing. Like, no followers mean anything, but... Uh, Each of my parents has 5,000 Facebook followers. Really? Yeah, it's not hard to get Facebook followers. So he goes home, and remember the like the the, the, the letters on the wall arranging thing that happened earlier? This time, it comes back again and just reaffirms that we what we already know. Taylor Swift has a duty to her fans. You're doing good, Russell. Keep up the fight. Like, and then he just has a hallucination, and it's, dr- like, literally dreadful and horrifying, where it's like, uh, all these fans of Taylor Swift, look, they're at the show. It's, like, just stage footage is what he is, just, like, imagining. And then it cuts to, like, a gray, like, dreary environment where it's, like, a girl, like, is sobbing in her room over the new Taylor Swift because her letter didn't go through. And then eventually it, like, le- builds up of, like, sad people who, who, like, contacted Taylor Swift and didn't get anything sobbing, and then it eventually becomes a girl, like, flings herself off a building in his, like, mind. And then he's like, holy shit. I've got it. Like, I'm, there's no way I can lose. If I lose, reality is wrong. The controller was broken. Try again. And then I did touch on the, the guy earlier who, like, forces him to the ground at gunpoint to drop the lawsuit. All of this persecution, like, happens within, like, a week. And then... Th- then he, like, has a Rocky montage where he bulks up. I have to skip a lot of this stuff because... Oh! This is something I cannot skip. It's very important. He opens up his email one day. He's at work. And he gets an email from this guy who calls himself Chaz. And Chaz says something along the lines of, Hey, Russell, you, you fucktard. Uh, we're gonna make your life miserable. Uh... Click on this link to see what I mean. And he clicks the link. It's a Kiwi Farms art. He calls it the Kiwi Orchards in his book. He never refers to it by name. Uh, This this Kiwi Orchards place, it's a horrible, horrible place where, like, disabled people are made fun of. And, yeah, yeah, whatever. I I like when the disabled people are made fun of. Yeah, same. Uh, Especially this one. Uh, I've been following Russell for, like, two years. Yeah, but, like, that... For some people, it's a badge of honor. Disability chase. Right? You should file. You should file. That, 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 you should use that as evidence. Like, yeah, like exactly. I've Which I've been made fun of on arts. Kiwi Farms, which entitles me yeah. to disability because I am retarded, <laughs> as evidenced by. Yeah, got This is the Russell Greer legal mind yeah. in action. Yes. It's a lot easier than faking retardation, which yes. luckily I don't have to do. <laughs> God. Oh, Your Honor, I'm really. But ball. speaking of faking. Russell, after opening this thing from the Kiwi Farms, his his fucking monitor begins to shake, and, like, uh, presumably, like, I, I imagine, like, a, a smoke cloud coming up in the shape of a skull, but, like, his Russell, his Russell, his monitor begins to shake, and a loud pitch noise comes from it. Suddenly, all of the monitors in the entire office do the same. The lights flicker on and off. He has caught a virus, right? And this virus has gone from his computer into the rest of the computers, into the mainframe. So they have hacked the mainframe. It, this is all Russell, like, shit. Uh, and after, after he goes home from, like, wrecking every single computer in his office, I guess, is what he says happened, his parents call him up, like, please, God, drop the lawsuit. Just don't, don't be, don't make us the parents of the guy who sued Taylor Swift. Mm. And he's like, no, I've, I've already lost everything. I'm going to put everything on the line to get it all back, and then some. There's nothing more dangerous than a man with nothing left to lose. Yeah, but he has, like, several things left to lose. He will lose them, though, don't worry. (laughs) Especially court cases. He has a lot of court cases left to lose. So if it stopped here, we wouldn't have a story. Um, Remember Ken? Uh, Ken Carter, our hero? Uh, He's... Okay... (laughs) He gets firebombed. He gets like car bombed. He goes out of his, he goes out, out of his office and like opens up his car, like gets into his car, starts it. He realizes like he has an oh shit moment because like there's like some gangster nearby who like chucked a Molotov into his car, like, his open window. 
And as soon as he starts it, he explodes. Fucking rip, except not, he, like, survives, and then after surgery, he's fine, but, like... This man who's not real. This man who's not real. Uh, is that why you said you had to skip over a lot of stuff? Is that, like, a lot of it's just shit that he made up in his book? It's or? just, like, literally, it's shit that he made up in his mind. Like, there's, there's a lot of that that I'm not gonna get to because I... Like, not even because of time constraints, because as I say things, it becomes less and less relevant, because... I'm realizing on the spot that a lot of Russell Greer's, like, fantasies are kind of repetitive, and it's just, it and en- it ends up with he and, and I think not even included a lot of them, it just ends up with he and Taylor Swift, like, fucking, or kissing, or him with, like, a functioning face, and they're fucking and kissing. Uh, <laughs> that that also does happen. So Ken is, like, in the hospital, like, you know that guy from Spongebob with, like, that, that episode where he's, like, covered in bandages? That thing. That's him. I have paper skin and glass bones. Ken has paper skin and glass bones and no face. Um, Russell, like, now malignantly infers that Scordis is, like, on a campaign to ruin his life. Uh, he calls up, li- literally calls up fucking Fox News. He's like, drop this fucking story or I will drop you. <laughs> and they don't. Fox 13, his, like, local Fox affiliate, publishes this story of, like, they, they say in the story, like, Russell Greer, crazy man who sued Taylor Swift. But, like, the fact that it was published at all makes Ken, like, rage out like a toddler, apparently, according to this book. So, oh my gosh, this is the fucking big one. Well, this is one of many big ones, but this is a, a major big one, uh... Day of the trial, he's not having a great day. He goes into a coffee shop, his his local, like, the, the, his regular shop. He gets his coffee, and but behind him there are some, like, financiers. Like, remember that scene from The Joker where he, like, gets his, the shit kicked out of him and then shoots him? Mm-hmm. That, but, like, they're, they're on, on top of being, like, businessmen, they're apparently also, like, Kiwi Farms trolls. So Russell takes one of the guy's phone, shatters it, and then, like, kicks him from the sidewalk, over a fucking fire hydrant, and onto the concrete. His head hits the concrete, and he starts crying. And then Russell runs away. Th- th- of course, none of this happened, but... I don't know people that used Kiwi Farms went outside, so that was... Exactly! Like, what are these billionaire, like, guys doing... <laughs> like, what are they do? Like, ha- I don't know. So he runs from this shop to FedEx Kinko's, to pick up his, like, legal documents. Because this is the day of trial. Usually, there's a thing called, like, trial prep, where they do all of this before the trial, like, maybe days before. Get all their documents printed, everything in order. Because otherwise, you're not prepared for court. And that's... That, that, that doesn't look good. Of course not. Um, he goes to FedEx Kinko's. He, like, runs over an old lady who is in line. And, like, she's like, I want a thousand pics of my dogs in, like, five by three. And... Russell, like, runs up to the front desk, like, I need my documents now. I need my 50 pages of shit now. And the guy who's at the the desk can't understand him. So instead of, like, slowing down for a second and being rational about it, he runs out. He's like, fuck it, never mind. He runs out, and he's like, he calls the court. Hey, I have a PowerPoint presentation. Just in case something like this happened, I prepared a PowerPoint. Which I, why would you, why wouldn't you just get the documents printed? But anyway... She's like, yeah, but you need to bring your own HDMI cord. So Russ runs from here to the only fucking Radio Shack in the entire country in 2009. Uh, Like, hey, and oh, I need to to include this before I forget. He does a little imitation of a GPS when he gets there. He's like, you have arrived at your destination. Ha ha, subtle reference to the GPS. And then he apparently somersaults through the door. And, like, is out of breath. He's like, I need an HDMI cable. Show me the HDMI cable. And he's like, and the lady's like, sure. Do you need a um, one foot, two foot, or six inch? Which, when it comes to cords of all size, first of all, I've never seen an HDMI cord, like, smaller than, like, four feet. Yeah. Uh, second, why would you not? Okay, Russell gets the six inch HDMI cord. It's the cheapest. It makes more sense. Be right, exactly. Like Except this. the TV at the court the monitor at the court is, like, a foot above the platform, the surface it would be on, as he finds out when he gets to court. So he gets to court, like, five minutes late, I think, covered in sweat. All of his stuff is in a plastic bag from Radio Shack. 
and he can't present any evidence, and I gotta find the actual line. Um, yeah, so we're in court, and it's Greg Scordis against him. Greg Scordis, after Russell fails to show any evidence, he's like, this man wants to fuck Taylor Swift like he fucks hookers in Vegas. That's the line. That's, Scordis, like, Scordis, like, rages out at Russell. I don't believe that's actually how it happened, but I guarantee you he did say that. That, like, he, because, like, one of the redresses in his original lawsuit, and I think it pervaded to, like, several others of his, is that Taylor Swift could get out of all of the charges, including, like, assault and shit. Like, malice, uh, assault, stuff like that that never happened. Like, how could someone who doesn't know who you are invade your privacy, right? Uh... All of that could go away if she just did, like, one of three things. Like, get him into the entertainment business. Um, go on a date with him as friends anywhere she wants. Or, like, uh, do his Holocaust... Like, he wrote a Holocaust screenplay about, like, some uprising at a Holocaust camp. And it's, like, in real bad taste. But it's also... It's, like, I read through it. It's, like... It's it's a full length script, but it's not good or notable in any way other than it's just bad and like all right, let's make that movie. Right. October's rising. Uh any agents con any agents watching this, uh contact Russell. He needs it done. As if we need another like he just wants to make Schindler's fucking list, I guess. Or something like that. Don't Every we? good director does. That's true. So he has like a vision in court where like there, like, he's in the castle with Taylor Swift, and she says to him, sorry, Russell, I, uh, they, they pull away from the kiss, she's like, sorry, Russell, I don't date deformed people. And then she kicks him out of the tower, right? And then as she kicks him out of the tower, the tower, like, starts crumbling, and she throws her guitar down at him, and it, like, shatters over his face. And, uh, yeah. First the disability, now a guitar? Exactly, uh... Somehow he manages to get interviewed after the loss. And the, the, the interview is out there of like him being like, well, the judge isn't being logical about this. Even though the judge was like way nicer than he had any business being. Like, well, this is what... He's like entertaining Russ as if he's a functioning person and not Russell Greer. Like, well, this, this and this is what you got wrong. Uh, Taylor Swift does not owe you shit. Stop it. But like, nice. He's like a guy. Good guy. Uh, so Russell gets a call at his, like, weakest moment. He gets a call from this woman, and she's like, I know what happened with Taylor Swift. I know the truth, Russell. And he's like, he like, he's like, sorry, I'm not on good terms with Taylor Swift right now. Uh, and then he, like, hangs up, as if he's on any terms with Taylor Swift. Right. So he gets, he gets added, like, two weeks later. Oh, no, no, before, before I talk about that, um... He thinks that Taylor Swift, like, anthraxed him uh, because he received something in the mail that had the return address of, like, someone named Taylor Swift, but, like, that was probably just a troll. Uh, it wasn't, like, from... It was, like, from somewhere in the Midwest. So, like, not an address that she has. And it's, like... It's, it's one of those things where you can, like, buy a bag of dirt that says, like, you're a dirt bag on it. Like, one of those, like... You know the, uh, the thing with, like, the gummy dicks, like, eat a bag of dicks? That kind of thing where it's, like, send something to someone you hate. And so someone sends that to Russell. He thinks it's Taylor Swift sending him anthrax, trying to cover up. He thinks that there's, like, an elaborate cover-up. Because uh, Taylor Swift also drops a song the day after trial. Uh, it's a song for... It, he did it... Or she did it with, like, um, fucking Zayn from One Direction. It was for uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. And he believes that... Like, because the, the, the news media outlet that he read called it a surprise drop. As if, like, they had a song on the, at the ready for whenever something bad happens and they need to consume the headline and cover up Russell's story. Which is now international news because the Daily Mail picked it up. <laughs> which, the Daily Mail is a fucking rag. Uh, sorry, Daily Mail. I, I love you. Uh, so someone adds him on Facebook, Taylor Olivia. And... Taylor Olivia is confirmed to be, like, a Kiwi troll, obviously. So she comments, like, makes, like, 
nebulous comments on his post for like two weeks. You know, that isn't what happened, dot, dot, dot. Because he's constantly, at all times, ranting and raving on Facebook about everything that's happening. Uh, she ends up DMing him, and they have this conversation where she's like, you know, I know Taylor Swift, and she looks for people like you. She looks for people who are, like, persistent and shit. But you, no, you're ugly. You're bad. Taylor Swift does not want you. That's, that's what this person says. And then... She walks him, and he literally thinks that this is, like, well, a troll wouldn't lie. Like, literally does the thing where, why would you go, why would you do that, go on the internet and, and, and tell lies? He literally has that realization that someone would lie to him, but he's, he still thinks it's not a troll, that it was Taylor Swift. Uh, so the next chapter in his book is, She Chose Him Over Me. But it, it's completely fucking ridiculous. Uh, more harassment of Russell ensues where he goes to the store to get his weekly, like, 2% milk, and the, some, like, Taylor Swift fan comes up to him, he's like, ah, you suck, uh, I hate you. And then he, like, drops the milk in fear for his life, and the milk, like, sprays everywhere. She slips and falls, and then everyone goes up over to, like, see, uh, like, are, are you okay? And he's over there in the corner, like, with his hands crossed, like, well, why didn't anyone come over and see if I was okay after the verbal assault that I got? You know, uh, and then dreadfully, he he's walking in the dark at night for some reason, and he goes to a train tracks, and he tries to <clears throat> tries to go to Greenland. He like stands in front of train tracks with his arms out, and then some guy like named Walter comes up and saves him. Like, whoa, buddy! Uh, <laughs> unclear what this guy because this guy is a lawyer. Uh, he's been following Russell Greer's case, and he wants to. He has, like, dollar signs in his eyes. He wants to... Uh, again, I don't think this guy's real because he calls him Russ. I... He's like, dude, we can make so much money about this. And Russell's like, no, 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 I didn't even want to... I just wanted to write a lawsuit and sue Taylor Swift to get her attention about this thing because she didn't know about what was going on. But... It's... Fucking nonsense. Like... Honestly, I... I Walter, everything about Walter, like, he, he's maybe, a, he's a very, he's like a footnote of a character. But the fact that he is here at all kind of depicts, like, a sense of self-importance that it's just not a fan of, you know? But, so this is where his book comes in properly. Why I sued Taylor Swift and became falsely known as fucking frivolous, litigious, and crazy. Those are the three things that he pretends that he's not, but he, like, is. Uh, it's a ridiculous book. He, there's, there's so much to break down about this book, but I'm going to be, like, as brief as possible. Lightning round. Uh, the, the credits page and, like, the, the copyright page is a mess. There's, like, a, it's all in Comic Sans. There's a 10987654321 for no reason. Uh, the dedication page, he dedicates to a girl named Bailey Bernard, who... Like, was a, was a heart sweet of Russell's, or, like, a girl that he went after and said no to, like, she said no to him. And then he just, like, he put it in his book that she killed herself because of him. Because of, like, the Kiwi Farms went and harassed her. And that's, like, her family is, like, dude, don't, don't put that in there. And he did it anyway, so they didn't sue him, luckily. Uh, but, yeah... Like, this book is just him, like, ranting and raving, and he has a whole section at the beginning, like, basically a self-own, like, hey, this is why my life sucks, and I'm not crazy totally. <laughs>
onto a, like the hood of a car and like is just a bloody pulp just covered in glass. But the, okay, but this is metaphoric glass. You got to Russell <laughs> Russell has a strange relationship with both humor and figurative language where if he if his like writing even goes like slightly out of pocket, he has to like whoa whoa whoa. This is like this is a joke. I'm explaining the joke now or this is like figurative language. He uses words like, you know, so to speak or fictional or metaphorical or whatever and he, he just can't write uh shit he will sometimes do this thing where uh he'll go on facebook as and, and like in a completely serious sense without any of the previous like consideration for figurative language he'll just go into this thing where like taylor swift and her age i'm suing taylor swift for violently beating the shit out of me like Making no, like, I guess, difference between the actual thing that happened, which is nothing. They've never, like, Taylor Swift does not know who he is, has never interacted with him, and God willing, will never interact with him. Taylor, stay safe. Taylor, stay safe. Uh, so this book is kind of just, uh, if you recall from Chris Chan's life, he did this thing when... 4chan first picked up on him uh, that he called information overload where he just went on a video and told everyone the real truth of his life and it was really horrifying and worse than what the trolls could come up with and everyone was thankful uh like he will in this th this is primarily a legal argument this book so he will go but like rapidly like breakneck shift between uh, narrative style and the next sentence will be like a legal conclusion but with weird language just thrown in like he cites the um duty of her agents not to shaft him which is like not a legal like ah uh, yes the law thou shalt not shaft um i mentioned earlier toby mcguire's spider-man correct uh yes he he talks about his disability and how it's hard for him to do stuff but then he's like, you know, it's really bad that I that I was born this way because I I want a cool story. I wish that I had been in fucking Iraq and I fell face first onto a landmine and protected all of my other guys. I want to be a war hero and have a defective face for a reason. But no, I'm just a useless square faced retard who was born like this. I gotta say, after we just like watched some clips of Russell Gear, he's not even like that weird looking. It's no, so he has a, okay. He's not weird looking. The thing he is, he has himself. a very mild case of so Mobius good. syndrome. Like, there are literally like other like there's like, this very po like successful popular film critic like blogger who is internationally recognized as like a film guy, uh, and he I think he like works as a consultant now, but. Like, guys with progressive, like, Mobius Syndrome who are making something out of their lives. Guys who cannot walk because they have Mobius Syndrome. And Russell is, like, bitching about it constantly. He has no excuse for any of this. Uh, he does this weird thing where he claims, every single time you hear him, he will at some point reference that he is comfortable with his body and that his, everything. But it's clearly not so because, like, he says that he, like, imagines that he has a different voice and imagines that he's basically, like, a different, way more attractive person. He considers himself, like, on the 10 scale, a 9, and as a result, thinks that he can only date, like, 9.5s and higher, which, that's a real, that's a real Elliot Roger way of looking at, like, this the... like, without, he's, like, he's telling himself, like, oh, if I didn't have the Mobius syndrome, I'd be a 10, right? Like that. Yeah, exactly, which is not true at all, because if you ever looked at him, uh, especially, like, his hair... Greasy as fuck, always unkempt, even at court. He can't be bothered to get it fucking trimmed. And he wears the same suit. He doesn't understand what is a dry cleaning. He doesn't understand how to wash a suit or how to maybe just buy a better suit. Because he has like a, a $100 suit from Men's Warehouse that he wears every time he wants to go to a strip club or impress a prostitute, which is practically every other like weekend. Uh, <laughs> so glad mine's a $300 suit. Right, exactly. Uh, during the course of this book, he photo credits various people, including uh, Gmail and himself, when he's like, it's a picture <laughs> of him, but he's crediting himself as if he took the photo. And it's, 
Like that, that's really funny. It right? It's like photo credit Russell Greer, and then he'll like sometimes throw in little like. Is he Peter Parkering it? Is he setting up the camera and like getting in the frame? No, the that like it's obviously like someone else taking a photo of him. It's like photo credit Russell Greer. Me and my graduate cap and gown. I graduated college. Uh, like he's just. I don't know. And then another, oh, oh, another thing he does, he's, he does the fat guy thing, which I know better than, like, anyone here, where it's like, in order to be accepted by people, you are funny. He does that, but he's not funny. He's just weird and autistic. Like, he has this weird, like, repertoire of jokes, like, oh, don't, am I drooling? Whoopsie, I'm just doing my best Homer Simpson impression. Like, <laughs> yeah, or like, he jokes in his America's Got Talent video that he's the world's best ventriloquist, which it's not known what he means. I guess it's because he doesn't, like, move his mouth, but... It, it, That's... We can th- yeah, he can throw his, vel- his mouth without ever seeing his mouth move. Right, he throws his voice. Throw his voice. Like, throw his mouth. Throw his, throw his mouth. mouth. Just like, Whoa. Let me get a new... Can I get some mouth juice, please? Oh, God. <laughs> so... For for various other reasons, this book is a formatting fucking it's 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 an abortion of a book because it's he like has hyperlinks. This book, book this book is available for print. <laughs> he has fucking hyperlinks in it, and what he'll do is like he'll fill half the page with like text. Like it's double spaced by the way, so he's really stretching for that like one hundred and twenty page count because this is like not even sixty pages of content. But what he'll do is. <laughs> He'll, like, fill half of a page, and then he'll put in, like, 50, like, 50 point fucking font at the bottom of the page. Oh, I was gonna put an image here, but it, there's not enough space for it, even though there's definitely enough space for it. And then he fills the entire next page with his fucking image. What well, his, his, like, line when, for this is, like, uh, too studly, when, when it's about him, it's, like, too studly for this blank space, and then per, open parentheses, Taylor Swift reference, close parentheses. This is like reading a child essay. It's, it's worse because children aren't like... Oh my gosh, speaking of children, I didn't mention this earlier. Russell was part of like a group of like Mormons who visited... A, this was immediately before his lawsuit. When everything... He saw Taylor Swift all around him. He was freaking out. And like the Hispanic guy held him at gunpoint when that totally happened. He goes to like the hospital as part of his church thing to like visit some cancer kids. And one of the cancer kids is like, Dude, Taylor Swift is so cool. She should come visit me before I die. And Russell Greer, like, tells him that it's not going to happen. And that, like, Taylor Swift is, like, a B-word and the shit's bad. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so he's, like, <laughs> he's just, like, Taylor Swift was his Santa Claus. But instead of not being real, like, he, he, act- he thinks that, like, she actively despises him. And it's, like... No, she doesn't know you exist. She like her family said that you were invasive and troubling, not like her. Oh my gosh. So, I never have to think about his book ever again except for when it comes in the mail because I ordered it and it didn't come in in time. But so, uh Taylor Swift lawsuit doesn't work. He and Taylor are on the rocks, I guess. They're not having a great time relationally. Is there ever a moment in their relationship where they have not been on the rocks? That is... No. <laughs> no, there's not. That is no. So, Russell... It, like, he literally admits this in his book, that he will never be complete without celebrity validation. And, like... As it should be. None of us will be. He should have become a producer. Yeah, he should... He sh- yeah, he should... Make art for people that you like! No, don't The do only that. reason That's I'm here is because I made art for people that I liked, and then... My art was good. He made art for Taylor Swift. Hey, uh, follow me. Links in the description for me and for all these wonderful people, my cast. Um, so, Ariana Grande. Uh, <laughs> Ariana Grande. Ariana, Ariana Grande. I, I, I'm trying, okay. Ariana Grande. I've been calling her Ariana Grande for like years now. I'm trying to train myself into it being Grande in my mind. Wait, it's Grande? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I got um, an antidote to help you. I called her Ariana Grande in my Spanish class once. Right, like, implying the joke that she was big. And a kid from the back of the though. class got really mad at she's me. She's fucking tiny, dude. 
Right. Yeah, she yeah. is as tall that, as... I never forgot how to pronounce it because, like, yeah, Ariana Grande. And someone was like, don't fucking call her fat. And I was like, okay, That fat. is how it's pronounced, right? Right, yeah. yeah. But I was making a fat joke. Okay. Nick Ricada on his show, like when he first found out that it was pronounced Grande, is like, "Hey, uh, is her middle name Nachos Dell?" Like, uh, like I love you, Nick, but that was a dumb fucking joke. Die. It's just that Ariana Grande has been around for fucking twelve years. Like, right. Exactly. Good. Like, I just... right. so she's her. She's his next target. Amazing. And what he does is. He sees that, unlike Taylor, who is avoiding Salt Lake City actively, she will not do a show in Salt Lake City because, like, as part of the suppression campaign that's going on regarding her uh, against Russell's lawsuit, she cannot take any, she can't do any shows, so Russell can't, like, show up and, and fucking call him by the place. Uh, he really speaking, believes that, like, her management... He literally believes that there is an right active, away. like, suppression campaign going on. <laughs> They're like, they, we gotta shut it down, uh... TM. Shut it down. <laughs> Russell buys VIP tickets to Taylor's or to Ariana Grande's Salt Lake City show, which includes a meet and greet and front r- front row tickets. So, <laughs> so Russell comes into the venue and immediately there's like, like her security team starts like making fun of him or something. He says that they're making fun of him because of his disability. Not true, never been true, maybe a little bit in, like, elementary school, because kids are brutal, I get it. I'm I'm fat and I have long hair, what do you want me to say, dude? Uh, Russell, like, they're just, like, concerned, because a 30-year-old man has just shown up at this, like, female pop star's concert. He's in, like, the front row, he's in the mosh pit, and he's trying to, like, go up to her and talk to her, not realizing, like, that, that was his intention when he bought a VIP ticket. He wants to go up front and just talk to her be like, hey, I'm Russell, this is my, like, this is my song on a CD that I brought with me, despite the policy that says no gifts, so. He also wrote a song for Ariana Grande, not just Taylor Swift? I, I think, I don't think he wrote a song for Ariana Grande, but he did, like, bring her flowers and wrote some, That's like, nice. poetry to pitch to her. I don't know. This poor woman has been terrorist attacked. <laughs> no, that comes up later! That comes up later! Oh my gosh. Uh... So they're suspicious of this guy who just showed up alone and is in the front row and is like, I mean, mouth breathing, obviously, because he has no other choice. But so they're suspicious of him. They think he's drunk because he's slurring his words, uh, which you heard. Uh, uh, He just he just he, he comes to the show like in his like smelly like suit and in with with flowers. He treats her exactly the same way he treats like the hookers from earlier, uh, and they get to the meet and greet room, and reportedly th- this isn't confirmed, but report I think it was mentioned in court as an offhand thing. Reportedly, Russell came like Russell's like ah oh, Ariana Grande. He like scr- like screams her name as if it's okay when like a child fan might do that. That's like okay, like you're twelve. I I get it, but like this thirty year old like. Hunchback Manchild like screams like a fangirl and comes up and like tries to hug her. Uh, oh, right, exactly. <laughs> Her security team is not having any of that. Uh, luckily, he's not like beaten to a pulp and kicked out. He's like, uh, okay, you gotta go to the back of the line, dude. Uh, ev- eventually, he gets up front. And he's like, hi, hey, I'm Russell. I- I'm the one who got you flowers. And she like looks at him. He's like, oh, thanks. Uh, then they take a picture together, which is when we realize that Russell is a huge fucking liar. Because earlier in the book, he said that he was uh, five foot eight, and Ariana Grande is five foot three. He is the exact same fucking height as Ariana Grande in this photo. Like, are you sure she's not wearing platform heels? I don't think this man would lie about his height. He's he tells a lot of tall tales about his life. A lot of tall I, tales. Height is not something to be lied to. Oh, wow, no, they are yeah. the exact same height. <laughs> okay, look at that photo. I'm going to put it up on screen, but all of you look at that photo. I want, What do you think Ariana's face is doing there? Like, Look at her Look at her uh, facial expression. She is closing her eyes. She's as trying as she to can. nope herself out of existence at that moment. She's Does like that, okay. trying to find a way to not exist, but still be present in the photo and smiling. To whatever degree possible. The least committal hand placement ever is like kind of like on the shoulder. Like, mm-hmm. she's like she looks like she's trying to escape. 
Dissociation yeah. is the word I would Dissociate. I mean, that is true. Like, Russell takes this, like, okay, <laughs> we need to, like, more importantly, Russell, Ariana Grande did not fall in love with Russell Greer. That's the first crime of tonight. Yeah. Uh, second crime, she, like, looked at him with disgust and stared at his disability, a.k.a. his fucking face. What, what else does he want her to do? Uh, three, he... She discriminated against him because she didn't smile enough for him in the photo. Which, I mean, yeah, no. No smiling there. No smiling there. I, I mean, like I said. But Ariana Grande's thing is she's always, like, you know, like a mean girl. She's right. Like, she looks comfy as fuck. She looks like she might be, like, on Molly or something. Like, oh, she looks, I hope so. Okay. Oh, that would, yeah. Yeah, but she definitely doesn't look like she's standing next to Russell at all. <laughs> Hopefully she's blocked him out. She deserves better. <laughs> Yeah, so this is like, basically this lawsuit is the same shit we saw earlier. It's just him suing celebrity. More than anything, he wants them to go to court and like be there to... Because he's of the opinion that they are unaware of these things that are happening. And it's just their agents like manipulating the situation. He wants like redress in the form of like a date. And like also like a million dollars. Because Russell does this thing where he like... To Cyberpunk 2077 levels will delay his fucking lawsuits. He'll hype them up on Facebook. Like, lawsuit incoming, 5,000 billion kajillion dollar lawsuit against Ariana Grande next week uh, on Utah Small Claims Court. <laughs> Shit like that. He'll just prolong it for weeks and weeks and weeks until he finally does it. Like, he finally pulls the trigger. And this time, we had a bit of drama with... Um, the Manchester bombing happened, and Russell literally just believes that he, uh, this lawsuit, if he had done it earlier, could have stopped the Manchester bombing. Literally, he's like, uh, if her agents weren't so, or if her uh, security guards weren't so bigoted, and they like actually did a good job of being security guards, then uh, all of those poor children would be alive right now. Like. And he keeps, like, quote, uh, not quote tweeting, like, sharing uh, other people's, like, posts and, like, articles about the Manchester bombing, just spewing this shit forever. So court happens, and, man, court happens. Russell Greer makes it there 35 minutes late. He, like, he's, he gets into court. Uh, the, the, um, uh, fucking... Face Scordis is the attorney for Ariana Grande. He's back, bitches. Greg Scordis is the attorney for... Because he's the best lawyer in Utah, literally. Um, apparently, Russell had been, like, cyber-stalking his daughter, like, on Facebook. Russell should have hired Greg Scordis. Right! To, to, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> and, and this... Like, like, there's a little exchange at the beginning. There's, the entire transcript is available online. I think, like, there's a text-to-speech who wrote it. It's a fucking riot of a document, and you should read it. But, in the meantime, the judge, like, uh, chews Russell out for being so late. And he's like, well, but I show, let me show you my alarms. Uh, so, and he's like, I don't want to see your phone, dude. I don't, I don't know where it's been. It basically, it ends with the, the Ariana case being dropped, uh, with, uh, dismissed with prejudice. And he almost goes to fucking jail uh, for cyber stalking in his like during his own trial, which th that's like a double worthless moment. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sorry. A lot of this stuff is like at this point. There's kind of a lull. Like he does lawsuits two and three against Taylor Swift, but they're just like palette change, like palette swaps. Of his previous ones. Mm -hmm. uh, like... Plug and play lawsuits against... Plug and play lawsuits! lawsuits. It's that! Because, like, I know this is true because, like... I mean, I've, I've read all of them, but, like... Every mm -hmm. single lawsuit starts with In a World. As if it's a fucking trailer. Like, in a world where celebrities have so much power that they cause people to kill themselves. <laughs> uh, why don't they have to disclaim on every social media post, like, this does not apply to Russell Greer. Like... That's what he's fucking asking for. Uh, I don't know where in that world. <laughs> like, so, 
Yeah, there's a lot of procedural problems with everything that he does. He's a paralegal, but he's not a good one because from, from what I've heard from his classmates, the education at the LDS Business College is not good for like paralegals because it's just lawyers teaching it who really don't give a shit and don't want to be there. But like he he fails to serve her. He like serves her lawyer, Greg Scordis, I think. And then when the court says, hey, you didn't serve her, He's like, well, but I really tried. Can you, like, a 30-page document basically boiling down to, I really tried, just, like, give it to me. And also, can I have, like, summary judgment and, like, a default victory? Can I get, like, $100 million, please? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, the... So, a backup dancer's, like, sibling or relative of Taylor Swift's gets cancer or something. And Taylor Swift pays for the treatment... And Russell Greer just fucking goes off on him on Twitter, or Facebook, rather. Just like, you're just a random person. You haven't even done shit for Taylor. <laughs> but, I, I mean, Russell's done so much. Like, Alien... I discovered Taylor Swift. He made her all those songs. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then he finds, like, a New York publicist. I think his, I think his name was, like, Clint or something. Uh, Yancey or something. Something like that. Uh... A publicist who is connected somehow to Taylor Swift. He, Russell sends his publicist his like song and his whole story about Taylor Swift. So it gets along to Taylor. So at this point, Taylor Swift might be interested or like might be, might know who he is. But then this publicist, like Taylor's agents are like, hey, don't ever contact us again. You're cut off from Taylor Swift forever. And so this publicist, like, yells, and like, you fucking ruined my career, dude. Which, like, I don't believe entirely, but it wouldn't shock me. And then, let's see. Oh, yeah. He makes fucking I Don't Get You, Taylor Swift, the sequel to I Get You, Taylor Swift, where we listened to that earlier. Uh, I'm going to put it in the description in the bibliography. Please. It's a good song. Oh, literally, I like it. And... Yeah, that's where you put all, like, your sources. Cool. Sorry, I just listened to you. Oh, um, the Kylie I Jenner that song... that was a library. So, uh, the, the, that's the biblioteca. Uh, the library... Or, excuse me. The, the Kylie Jenner song that we listened to earlier, that was part of, like, a minor campaign for... Um, uh, to, to win over Kylie Jenner, obviously. <laughs> but, 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 but... He quit the minute that... He found out that Kylie Jenner was dating uh, Travis Scott, inventor of the Travis Scott burger uh, at McDonald's. <laughs> and he's just like, like, he kind of exposes himself as a virulent racist at this point because he's like, he makes a bunch of posts of, like anti-Travis Scott being like, oh, uh, you could have had a man with actual substance, unlike the drug substances that your boyfriend probably is smoking. Which, to be fair, he probably, like, Travis oh, Scott. Dude, Travis Scott's Scott is definitely on drugs. But, like, he doesn't know Travis Scott from anything other than being... I don't know Travis Scott. He's on drugs. Like, being, like, being black and being, like, with Kylie Jenner. And also the creator of the, inf the famous Travis Scott burger. Made of Travis Scott, by Travis Scott, for Travis Scott. Did Russell Greer review the Travis Scott burger? <laughs> Did he sue? I would, McDonald's? okay. I would... I would, like, put down, like, $20 on a Russell Greer Patreon if it just meant him doing, like, food review, like, fast food reviews, like, the, if he did the report of the week thing, uh, review bra, yeah. if he just did that, I would pay so much money for it, because it would just be him, like, <laughs> I want to watch him try to eat, because, like, it's fascinating thinking about him, like, I want him to review unlimited breadsticks at Olive Garden now, fucking hell, so... Again, like, 2019 is a bit of a lull for Russell. He d puts a bunch of Yelp reviews up, including a couple that suggest that he, like, had a an encounter with a dude at a massage parlor, and, like, ma like he he's, like, he insists in the review that, like, oh, you know, next time I really want a girl massager person. Masseuse. Uh, Masseuse. Like, Implying, yeah, implying that he got, uh, like, a dude to, like, touch his body, which is disgusting. He... Nothing gay about having your bro give you a little massage, man. Dude, like, squeeze my glutes, bro. I, I think I'm a bit tight up there, bro. Uh, that's what he did. And then, also, he, like... 
he edited it out later, but there are like screen caps around of him admitting to have given a hand job to one of his like friends to bring like to give him a ride to a brothel in Nevada. Which I mean, the, desperate times, you know. It's like not gay if it was for a why girl. Why did the friend just also? Why did he just have him like pay for a, him to also? I guess did he? Your well, brothels are expensive. Right? Hand jobs are free. It's You're asking true. the wrong question, Digi. Who would want a hand job from Russell Greer? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's also a great question. It's a it long seemed like drive. he would be like an expert in that. I, I guess he. Mm. But yeah, so like the the like past past like the the Ariana Grande shit, a lot of Russell Greer is just si- like second verse same as the first. It's just him repeating himself. Like hi- like you know how like when you put a song on like repeat, but the repeat with a little one in the corner, that's just him, but slightly different each time. And this doesn't like he does a little different thing where he further proves to be a very racist by like. Petitioning, he put up a change.org to, he does a lot of those, by the way, change.orgs, uh, to, I think, make Salt Lake City put up a mural of the, the white lady that was killed by the police last year, uh, in Michigan, or Minnesota, somewhere. There was, like, a white lady killed by cops, and he's like, well, you have all this George Floyd shit up, like, we need a hashtag white lives matter, bro, like, so he's, he's basically, like, a member of the Confederacy. And now, oh my gosh. Yeah, so, Russell, like, double, triple shits the bed with this next lawsuit uh, against uh, Joshua Moon Null of the Kiwi Farms. Uh, He just... Like, it's not even good, bro. Like, it's not even... He says that Section 230, which is the, the thing that protects Null from, like lawsuits against uh, about things that people say on his site he says that that's an old like archaic law and that it should not apply to no for like saint donald trump agrees do you say saint donald trump just donald trump agrees okay. that's true but donald trump old is like wrong bad. uh and, but like sp- my problem is that like he says uh no specifically for some reason it, it's not meant to protect him so therefore like this law does not work, so therefore, make this law not apply to no. And then, like, for, for no reason. And then, oh, the fucking, so on the front page of Kiwi Farms, there's like a bit of, there's a couple like headlines from the site. And one of them was at one point, like, Russell Greer uh, is in court for cyber stalking. Uh, 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 it, it, one of his victims sued Russell Greer for cyber stalking. And then he puts that in the lawsuit as like, but I only had one victim to cyber stalking. I didn't have multiple, as it implies. And that's apparently his ironclad legal reasoning. There's the entire document is nonsense. The whole th- this girl Erica is the one that is like bringing the action against him. She's like a school teacher in Salt Lake City, like local. He just sent her an email like, "Hey, babe, I want to get to know you." And I just saw on your social media that you're, like, you just broke up with your boyfriend. I can treat you better than he can. And she makes the mistake that I see all too often of, like, women in, like, not to, not to be, like, uh, fucking sexist. Women suck! That, too. Uh, number one, women suck. Number two, women enable this shit far too often, especially when they haven't seen it too much before. Like... If you get a DM like that or an email like that, like, hey, uh, I want to get you to know you just as friends, et cetera, et cetera, just don't, just don't even entertain it. Because as time goes on, like, you can see in this, like, 50-page-long chat log, or, like, 50-screenshot-long chat log of just Russell pushing the envelope a little bit each time. And then she gets a boyfriend and starts to kind of, like, secede a bit, and he freaks the fuck out. He's like, I bet your boy, uh, her boyfriend, by the way, is named Chad. So, which is the funniest thing about this, but like she's like, oh, your he's like, oh, your boyfriend is abusing you and making you do this, and I can treat you better than him, basically. And better than he can. Yes, that that is Russell, but for women that he cannot actually treat better, like baby, we're going to the fucking Olive Garden. 
We're going to Applebee's. Have you ever had a two for 20, bitch? Did Calvin Harris ever give you a two for fucking 20? No. And he can't. Uh, just, th this whole thing is like, just typical, like, nice guy, cuck loser behavior. Just escalated to 11. And that is what best sums up Russell Greer. Russell Greer is a nice guy, but he's a nuclear nice guy. He's a nice guy on uranium, acid, also LSD, which is acid. Yeah. And then um, autism, which is the most powerful drug. I think that's the conclusion that we can come to, seeing all of this shit that he's done, the, the lawyering that has got us to this level of lawtism, which is... Lawtism! <laughs> which is the thesis of this. Who is Russell Greer? Russell Greer is lawtism. I brought it full circle. I am God. Uh, Russell Greer is lawtism, which is using the law to be autistic in the law. Any questions? Mint. Do you have an autism chart to, like, separate all the autisms? Do I have an autism chart? Yes. No, but I will soon. Or Digi will soon, probably. More yeah. likely than I will, because Digi knows more things. Um, fuck, Riley left. Uh, uh, I guess that's it. Woo! <laughs> Are you gonna, uh, get sued? I... I hope so. Say some know? more offensive things about Russell oh, Greer. Oh, Russell Greer, uh, let's see. Square face retard. Um, Good start. Cannot sue anyone for shit. Cannot keep a job for more than, like, half a year unless it's as a janitor. You know, it'd be really funny if you saying just then that he can't sue anyone for shit was, like, some kind of karmic thing you just put out into the universe where the one person he sues correctly is you. Right, right. And then I like I wind up in fucking debtor's jail back in 1820. Do you have a question? Oh, I was just saying he slobbers like a dog. He slobbers like a dog, but unlike a, unlike a dog, he is not friendly or affable. Uh, <laughs> he is at best like a, a like a two and a half like a dog in he's terms a of words. Werewolf. He's a wait, what? A Explain. Riley, do you have any questions about Russell Greer? We're, we're in wrap-up. Uh, no. I was really thorough. I thought I would uh, be able to come up with questions. That's okay, man. I get it. You were good. Dude, you good. just kind of rammed through. I'm also a bad student. Don't fucking... No, no, I get it. I'm also a bad student, which makes teaching a lecture that much harder. What are your parting words for Russell Greer? My parting words for Russell Greer... If he's watching is, this. Uh, well, he is he watching is this. He is watching this. Sue me, bastard. Don't actually sue me. Uh, do, maybe. Sue him. He hates you. I'm making the representation right now that I'm accepting any and all lawsuits from Russell Greer. A a all of them. Get someone to write and pr proofread your fucking... All of the mistakes in your book could be... Like, if you read them, if you read the sentence once more, even if you have, like, a, an IQ of 70, Forrest Gump could find some of this shit. I'm sorry, the, the literary critic in me is getting out of it. Uh, I want to oh, I want to give you feedback I, and make your lawsuits better so you can be more effective at being a loser. Call, like, is this, like, a pitch to work with Russell Greer? This now? is a pitch? You're like, sue me, I want to yes! work with you. Sue, this is brilliant! Sue me... So we'll I will produce your music hey, let's if you just a take my together. advice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do a collab for a lawsuit, lawsuit, bro. You DMs are open. His next lawsuit. His next against you. Yeah. Against me. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make merch for our lawsuit and shit. Anyway. Beep. Woo! Woo!